We are back for episode 44 of the Quarantine Cast here on Beyond the Brick. I'm Joshua Hamlin, and I've got Jeff and Brian back with me. We'll be talking about some of the recently announced uh, BrickLink designer program sets and some of the possibilities for new sets there. Maybe talk a little bit about uh, the exciting new space shuttle set and possibly do some building. Who knows? We'll see. Let's jump on into it. So I do have this uh, this like half of the one dino left from last week's stream that I want to finish today, but uh, I don't know if you guys had anything you were wanting to build or not. Um, I've just been working on a mock off and on, so I don't have much. Brian, anything? No, no, I don't. <laughs> <build like that. laughs> no, no, no I, I don't. I am so beyond Lego. I don't need to build Lego. You are I'm beyond just... the brick. Wow. Oh. Whoa. Is it, is it, are you about to announce that you're like quitting the streams? <laughs> I I have announced I've I'm resigning multiple times, but the Still the, the, the gift cards are too <laughs> enticing <laughs> to walk away. You know. <laughs> so I'm still here for now. I mean, if you quit, who's gonna win the haircut game? I mean, no one. No yeah, one. Yeah, it's impossible. Got to retain the title somehow, man. <laughs> Mike, how's it going? Great. Thanks for uh, for having me. Um, good stuff. Yeah, got a little break from work so I can join you guys for a few moments. But yeah, good stuff. I I ain't got nothing to build today, so we're like just sitting here and like looking at each other right now. Hey, that's fine. That's fine. You know, <laughs> you can't just talk about Lego on a Lego stream because there's not enough. Actually, this week there is enough going on to warrant an entire podcast about it between all the different announcements. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm, well, lots mm -hmm. of things. But normally. There's nothing going on, so we got to kill time. <laughs> no, like, wow. you guys noticed that this week was 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 like everybody waking up. So it's hot, like a spring. Hot week, Mike. I know. Hot week. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Apparently, you guys have never been to Oklahoma during this time because it's apparently still winter. Yeah, it's oh. it's like 55 here. It's, it's so like, nice outside here right yeah. now. Like I was outside this morning for a while. Oh, it's it's it might be the nicest day of the year so far. Yeah. All right. Great. All right. Fantastic. <laughs> Can we get something out of the way before? I don't know if you want to crack some bags open, Joshua, but I don't want to hear Mike talk about this ad nauseum dropping hints throughout the stream. Can we just talk about the space shuttle and Mike can fanboy out about it for a solid 45 <gasps> minutes? I, I, I mean, I, I did record a video already, so I'm like, I vent it out <laughs> I, I, I last video, night. It's good. I'm just, I'm just going to edit it today and post it on my channel. So we're good. Like, don't worry. I vented. I mean, in a positive way, because this, is a, this, is, this thing is beautiful. I love it. It's yes. a great discovery. Okay. So I guess So to me, whenever a new kind of space shuttle or space type set is announced, I'm very neutral about it. I don't, mm -hmm. you know, I don't dislike it, but... It just doesn't do a whole lot for me. So, uh, mm -hmm. what what is I, because this one seems to have really gotten people excited. Like people seem to really yeah. be liking this model. So compared to all of the past shuttles, what what is more significant about this one, and what do you like better about this one? I feel that I mean it's just the modern age, modern era Lego set. Like even the designer video, by the way, is super detailed. If you look at the how they approach the the cargo bay and how they approach the they had a new element. They have a new element for the cargo bay door, for example, just specifically for the shuttle to retain the shape and get the most space inside and all this stuff. I think like Lego Lego was really into NASA stuff in the past, as we all know. Um, they really kicked off things with I think the Saturn V and the previous shuttles were awesome as well, but never as smooth as detail and detailed. Uh, the amount of stats is just minimal on this one. That's one thing. So yeah, people are over it because they love the previous shuttles, and I think uh, it just captures this modern era Lego model building uh, in one set. And even I've I've seen the brick set ratio with the little poll asking like who's buying it day one. And I've never seen that many people going like, yeah, day one purchase. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think they did it right. Uh, Lego continues to succeed with NASA sets. And this is just, it was like just a matter of time after the ISS, the, the Apollo lander, the Saturn V. What else could you do from NASA, right? Of course, the space shuttle and having all those new pieces around. I believe it's, uh, it's the only way to go forward to just make it happen. So, yeah, I'm happy. I'm a big nerd. I'm, I'm a big space nerd. So, definitely. 
I did notice that the, the general lack of studs, uh, especially compared to some of the past ones, I thought was, was very nice. It has a much yeah. smoother look to I, it. I would, I would call it like, I like this to call like the A-Wing aesthetic. Like uh, when the A-Wing came out from Hans, um, you notice how the, the A-Wing is a very smooth ship from Star Wars, right? But uh, everybody noticed that he purposefully added some studs on top of the model just to make sure it looks like Lego. And I think with Shuttle, you kind of have the same approach. Let's add some stats here so people kind of still know it's Lego, but from afar it looks like a like a diecast model, uh, you know. So yeah, I, I think that approach. I mean, I like this approach. Many people will be like, "Hey, it doesn't look like Lego at all from afar." But I, I mean, from an AFO like me and and who collects stuff and like smooth, well manufactured things and good looking things, uh, I'm happy that this is coming out. Also because I don't really have any other past space shuttles. Those were all my dark age. So this one is definitely a, a great comeback. Just so everyone knows, this is set number 10283, 2,354 pieces. Looks rad. Tons of metallic silver. That entire... Uh, the Hubble telescope is yep. the entire... Yeah. And I think they, they said in the designer video, they used the most silver pieces ever in a single set. How much convincing you think it took for the designer to be like, you know what? Let's make this. Let's do all the brushed silver because that's I a know. lot. I, I, I like must have been more talk than I don't know Harley Davidson set. You know. Yeah, I that mean, hey, clearly, yeah. If, that if any set deserved to have that brushed silver look, it was that set. I know. And I guess this one. So yeah, was that yeah. Uh, Milan, was Milan the designer on this one? Yes. Okay, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, he did. He does great work. Yeah, there's a video uh, in a NASA jumpsuit about it, so that's cool. I've seen some really cool like promo content on this set, not only the designer video, I think the one of the uh, channels, Geek Culture, I believe they have a website about geeky stuff, and they did an uh, interview with um, one of the women astronauts who was on the space shuttle STS-31 mission. So for example, like Lego is really pushing this one, It's I think it's it's well deserved. For sure. sure. There's a good question from Justin in the chat. How long have space sets been out in, uh, in Legos? So uh, I guess it, to, to me, uh, it made me think of how long they've had the partnership with NASA. Does anyone remember? I'm trying to remember when that first. It's been a, a number of years wow. now. Like if you look back at old, old city, even I think town had space shuttles. But were they, they ever NASA branded? I think they got super affiliated when they sent out the satellite with the two uh, space minifigures on it. Um, I don't remember the year. That it was, was in the like, 90s. Yeah, quite a while ago. Yeah, so it's been there for a while, you know. I can conduct a little quick search on Brickset probably and find out. <laughs> yeah, probably. Um, I which can't like the first set, like the, those? I know, like when I was a kid, even before my dark age, I remember uh, Lego Town lineup having space launch vehicles, and uh, that must have been somewhere at the beginnings of you know of full on NASA lineup, I guess. Well, let's see. Ninety three was when they is either ninety two. It was either ninety three or ninety four when they came out with the space shuttle launch, and that was with the shuttle, the the red uh, construction launch system. And they also had the airplane um, shuttle transport two and a couple of other smaller sets. It had to be 94 or somewhere around there. And then maybe shortly after 96, 97, that's when they got super hooked in. I, don't, I can't remember exactly. So like I quick search shows me that if I type space shuttle, the first one that comes out is 1990. Okay. Um, let me see if I can share the screen real quick here, but yeah. Um, that would be pretty much it. Uh, yeah, I think I'm sharing the screen right now. Go see it. Can you share it, John? There you go. Okay, so this is uh, set number 1682, Space Shuttle from 1990. Mm. I think that might be one of the first ones. I Before, think like, they had only had space sets, but yeah, but this must be... Was mm. it NASA branded? I don't know. Uh, yeah, it, it's, it's, it has USA, but doesn't have a NASA. Yeah, okay, it does have the NASA Worm logo. Right there. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So the, that's the classic NASA logo they use lately in the SpaceX Dragon flight to come back to the old school stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the Worm logo, as they call it. So that's pretty cool. There you go. The umbilical tower, the launch tower. Yep. There you go. Brian, what, uh, what, what do you think uh, about these types of sets? 
We've gotten a lot of space, and obviously it's for a reason. They probably sell very well. I'm not particularly <laughs> over the moon for them. Um, I like them. <laughs> I, I think it looks really cool. If I, I don't know, if I got it, I would probably build it and enjoy it. But it's not something I'm going to buy day one. But I have it on a tentative wish list of Lego sets that I have that I'm not going to buy anytime soon. But it's on the wish list just because. So, um there's always going to be some sort of space thing. I'm I'm kind of on a space like whatever for me like personally. Whatever space, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we've got a lot of space, but that's, there's yeah, a that's lot what, of other That's a few niches. things I'm I'm pretty nerdy about when it comes to right. I don't know, just like something I like. A lot of space and a lot of cars. So, between mm. those two. Yep. Yeah. That's like definition of midlife crisis, but <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah. That's out. That's done. And that'll release on what? April first. So April 1st. hopefully no none not on that April Fool's joke. There we go. Yep. 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 Uh, let's take a look at. I don't know. Is there anything else that has been like unveiled? Oh yeah. So um, <laughs> the big uh, the, the Walton family made a little oopsies, and they announced. By uh, the way, do you guys think it's a whoopsie or it's like a planned? What is it? It's not planned. The, these people, Walmart, they're they're too busy selling. Uh, I don't know propane tanks. They don't. They don't know what's going on. They just, Walmart, like, oh, we, got, we got these images. Put them up there. Whatever. We, yeah, yeah, yeah. Walmart puts them out, and Lego comes out. What are you doing? And Walmart's like, sue us. Right. You know? Like, like, okay, okay, fine. <laughs> so they unveiled. Um, if yeah. John wants, you want to pull this up, you can. I'm not going to force you because your own, you're your own person here. <laughs> Jeez, but there are, no, there like, are I, three... I think. By the way, Lego Lan specifically stated that as long as it comes from official major retailer. It's it's a it's a fair game. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. There are three of these announced at one time: the Darth Vader helmet, the Scout Trooper helmet, and the Imperial Probe Droid. Man, these look really cool. I really wish I could build some of these because these look awesome. That's crazy cool, right? Anyways, we have these three here. Um, I hope I get my hands on these at some point. That would be crazy, right, Josh? That, that would be a great a great experience. Yeah, I mean, it would it would be insanity. Brian has told me for years that outside of Peach's Castle, uh, Darth Vader's helmet bust is the number one thing he's wanted. Yeah, I'm really clicking my ruby slippers together, Lego, that I get these. Thanks a lot. Um, Darth Vader looks very cool. Uh, looks like it has a very interesting build process. I hope it's a tremendously good build process. I have no idea, obviously. Um, the, the probe droid is the standout one for a lot of people because it's the most unique of the three. And unlike any other bust that we've gotten before... Um, I think Jeff, you have an echo. Not me. On, ooh, who is it? Is Joshua? It might be Joshua this time. Ooh, how unprofessional! There we go. Um, so the, there's a scout trooper as well. A lot of people saying the scout trooper looks the best of the bus between this one and Darth Vader. The probe droid looks um, excellent. Oh, there's Dan. Hi, Dan. Hey, Dan. Um, I like Hello. all three. Hello. I like all three Those of them. I love the Darth Vader the most. Looks very cool. Uh, I think Brick Wiz was like, he looks very surprised for some reason. I think he looks very terrifying. Uh, I think so. there is something off about it. I don't know. Maybe like there is too much flat. So I really some... hope when you yeah, see whatever. it in person, Mike, it looks really good. What? What's that? What? <laughs> wow. Wow. That wasn't so subtle. What? So, Dan, what do you think about these busts? Uh, I love them, man. I, I love them. I'm definitely down. Oh, beginning. I saw that one. I actually saw that one months and months ago. I've been waiting for that one. So was it um, leaked before? No, it was on a call with Lego months ago. But um, the I really like them. I, that one doesn't look so good now that I can actually see it properly. But I still love it. I've got all the rest. I'll get it. Uh, the droid is sick, man. I love the droid. I really love how they made that plaque with like a little snow. It's integrated yeah. in yeah. the set. So that's yeah. something I'm... Yeah, this is a great little display piece. I love it. And I like that they use kind of like a metallic gray look. Yeah. Uh, and dark yep. bluish gray instead of like full black like we see on Hoth. But it's still pretty cool. That's an interesting color choice because it is synonymously mm -hmm. black, that droid, isn't it? Wasn't that like a canon thing when the droids were upgraded by the Empire and they like kind of went full, a bit more metallic look than the, yes. the blackness we've seen in the... In the Hoth, Assault on Hoth? Yes. Mm. There you go. Ner nerdy fact of the day. I I wonder what the market research on this was in terms of like, hey, 
of all the Star Wars characters, we should make like a buildable little thing of this uh, random droid from episode five. That's and it. At least they're not re-releasing something again. Yes, very true. And I'm not disappointed true by that. this uh, this model at all. I'm not saying it doesn't deserve to. They've never done it before, so it's cool. Yeah. Uh, it deserves to be made, but uh, cool. It's pretty iconic when you think about it, because everybody knows what an Imperial probe droid looks like, you know? Yeah, I agree. And hi, chat. Thanks for the warm welcome. I see a good comment in the chat. Waiting for some good guy helmets. Good point, actually. Yeah, if you there's think no... About it. Has it been all either uh, bad guys or well Boba Fett? You know he's his own. Entity. He's like an anti anti hero anti-hero. kind of yeah. Um, but who who could be done in like this bust without looking weird? Like if you take Luke or Han Solo, like you're gonna have to build a face. Chewbacca. And, yeah. uh, and then it's a problem yeah, probably. Chewbacca. Yeah. Chewie, yeah, Chewie can be good. C three PO. I and, don't and believe that they're gonna do any humanoid faces. Of this line, yeah. I think it's exclusively no. going to be helmets. It's going to be too difficult for one reason. Yeah. Gonna, everybody going like this looks weird, <laughs> and helmets are just way too better to portray. Yeah, yeah, and the problem with <clears throat> with uh, the good side helmets is most of them are um, they're not full face. You know, they might have visors and stuff, but they're not full face, which means they'd have to come up with something to fill the inside mm. to make them buildable. Like, you know, you've built these things, right? They all, they just snot from the inside out to get the shape. So I think that'd struggle. Like if you, if you were to do an X-Wing pilot's helmet, for example, how do you fill in that whole front of the face? That, that'd that be interesting. Well, I mean, you could do um, an X-Wing pilot's helmet, you know, and then fill in the rest with like a fleshy face of like random pilot and call it whoever. Maybe add a distinguishing mark that Mark Hamill has or the guy that played Wedge has or whatever. I don't know. Or maybe you don't and you just have the helmet. Yeah, you do that too. Mm. By the way, can we come back for a second to the space shuttle? Not about the space shuttle, but do you guys notice that in the designer video there was like a like a helmet in in the back of the of the mm. designers? And it like maybe it was a prop just for a nerdy like design room, but it looked like an X Wing's pilot helmet, in my opinion, kind of. It was like right around the shelf by the shuttle model. Yeah, it was about it was almost full size too. Yeah, the mini. It was like a full size, yeah. Like maybe mm, not fully full size, that. but like definitely sizable. Close, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That would be interesting. Um but I, as far as we know, we don't know if this is going to go outside of a Star Wars license, this sort of uh, build. So I don't know if like Marvel Kid, they would do an Ultron head. I don't know. Um, well, they did well, the Iron, the Iron Man. And you know, there's and Venom. Carnage and Venom. Oh, yeah. yeah. Carnage. Yeah. Yeah. Supposedly well, another one. Off. Never mind. They're definitely focusing on Star Wars, though. Yeah. So that's the helmet. Is that a that's not the traditional, obviously, white rebel helmet. No, that's a X-wing pilot's helmet. Oh, it's a pilot's okay. helmet. Yeah. So clearly, that wasn't an accident. So maybe look forward to that existing sooner rather than later. Enhance, enhance, enhance. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's like a prototype. You can see the visors, which kind of will match, like I don't know, Luke's Red Five helmet visor, but it's orange usually. Um, the side kind of panels resemble very much so on the X-Wing pilot's helmet as well. And the, the little thing on the top. Mm. You can kind of uh, tell. Imagine if that becomes a whole new line in its own, just X-Wing pilot's helmets in this scale. Because there's yeah. so many different pilots with so many different uh, livery on them. That could be a thing on its own. We got the TIE Fighter pilot in the bus, but it's much smaller scale. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I just I, I don't think it's 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 a coincidence. It's, I don't think it's a random thing. They they specifically no, purposely placed it there, uh, yeah. and it's not even NASA thing. It's just a Star Wars thing. Clearly. Well, yeah. I think um, I, I hate bringing this up every time I'm here, but Hasbro has done really well with the Black Series Star Wars helmets, mm. simply because they don't fill in the face of it, and I think that yeah. might be how Lego is skirting the issue because they're filling out you know a face of the character yeah. that's in the helmet so that might be a way that we get that i, I don't know lego is lego is clearly researching the market like funko yeah. pops boom brickheads um yeah you know 
So Lego is monitoring their competition for sure, trying to see where they can like leverage. Well, every toy uh, company's done that. Power toy oh, back yeah, in the absolutely, day. And, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Like helm, uh, but I think like helmets is a, would be a really good idea. Yeah. Collectors. Especially like Lego pushing adult stuff right now, and this year, oh, so absolutely. far, like we're March and and it's super strong year. Like I'm, I don't even know how I'm gonna buy all this stuff, but it's it's crazy. That's a two hundred and eighty dollar helmet. Yeah. Probably looking. Look at the size. Like look at the next right. to the shuttle. Like not quite shuttle, Wow. I mean, I, I mean Star Wars, Disney, and then all that, all those pieces. And size mm -hmm. too. The shuttle you know is half a meter long. Uh, look at look at the size of this thing. It's next a big to it. ship. Yeah. See, seeing these helmets just makes me wish we had like a, a medieval helmet uh, line like this with like <laughs> different helms and crests. Uh, yeah. That would be super cool. Yeah, Roy Ben in the chat. Avengers weapons, maybe I don't know. I mean, they're looking at life size like, stuff. I mean, they're, when you think about it, like Mythic Legends is selling really well. <laughs> he Man is selling really well, and like accessories for those aren't out yet. But supposedly Hasbro's releasing like a helmet for a couple of the figures and things like that, like life size helmets, like Hasbro's done. Well, if they're through Hasbro, so like you know, if those sell well, then I wouldn't put it past us that we'll see like a Lego lion's helm being made or something along those lines that would be yeah. cool yeah. um golden light pictures or it could be just a background piece Ex yeah i mean it could be a it's, it's like a nerdy room like they, they dressed up as nasa but it's 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 too too much of a like uh accented piece of that background it's yeah. like it, it's out of place it's so out of place they, like, if, if, if you if you look at the left of the shot they have like nasa shuttle they have nasa stuff on the shelf to behind the the guy mm. in the blue uh, yeah, right there. But this, this, this is just like look at look at the the composition. Like they specifically placed it there to for us to see it. And yeah, Lego Lego is really good at hints lately. Like on the boxes, we've seen the the teasers of the Falcon on the Death Star box in the past. We've seen a few other teasers in, along the way. The Star Destroyer was teased at some point as well. Uh, so Lego Lego is playing a, a little viral game with us here, and and I'm sure it's gonna be something. So pay attention. Yep. Yeah. I fully agree. Lego have been teasing out some of their own things for quite some time now, and it's become a thing where people are actually looking for it and predicting what's coming in the future. Um, I, even the the shark from uh, video was teased out in one of the uh, in January city sets on the uh, um, it was I think it was graffiti on the skate park. Yeah. So yeah, I agree. Keep an eye Damn, out. You, uh, let's see, was Nico at the Lego show that you had in New Zealand recently? He was indeed, yeah. I've got a video coming up shortly with an interview with him. That That's what I was thinking. And... That's, how did that show go for you guys? Uh, the show was really good. Um, the numbers through the show probably weren't as high as what we've had in the past. So I think there's still a little bit of like COVID hangover, even though we're, you know, we're relatively COVID free. There's still a lot of confidence in New Zealand, but people, uh, I think there's some people that still aren't going out. Uh, but there was, I think there was about 6,000 people through over the course of the, the two days, which is pretty decent. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it was very, it was popular and everyone had a good time. We are That's so jealous, great. by the way. Yeah, it was good. Your it was good fun. First trip of Beyond the Brick, New Zealand destination, maybe? Uh, oh, absolutely. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, it has to be. First, I mean, first international trip. I did just register us yesterday so that the next show that's happening in the U.S. at this point is uh, Brick Rodeo down in Texas, uh, form formerly known as uh, Brick Fiesta. So at the end of July, that show is scheduled to be happening. They've opened up registration, so I just registered us. Uh, we'll, we'll see uh, what ends up happening with that. Yeah. Um, Texas, but, you say? Yes. That's incredibly south of Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's uh, somewhat in your neck of the woods, so I think it's probably still several hours from you, Jeff. But I, I don't care. You guys need security? <laughs> it's uh, in Houston Texas is this it? year. That's the show that moves between cities in Texas every year. Is it Houston this year? Mm-hmm. Oh, God, that's a drive. Well, yeah. Comic-Con Comic is canceled. I know for sure. San Diego Comic-Con is canceled. And that's July. So we'll right, see yeah. if there's anything else that's gonna show up in the on the map. We'll have to wait and see. But uh, first, first international trip is to New Zealand. That's right, Dan. <laughs> oh, absolutely! You got to come down here. It's a great place to be. Hmm, bad. I'm, so, glad, yeah, we... I'm glad the show went well for you. 
Thank you. Yeah. And we were very lucky that Nico just happens to be in New Zealand at the moment, given that he is a New Zealander. Um, he's been back here on holiday and he's also, he's actually still working at the moment. So he's working from home. Uh, returning to Billund in April, I think. Um, but yeah, it was super awesome to have a, a designer at the show. It's not something that would happen for shows of the size down here. But, um, you know, because he was here and there's not a lot happening, Lego sanctioned it and it was all good. So I it was watched, a, a... Sorry? Oh, I was about to compliment you. I watched your video on uh, Between the Bricks on the, the displays at the show and it was really good. So it looks like a very cool show. So if people haven't checked that out, they need to. Yeah, it was. It was really cool. It was good to get out there again, actually. It's been a while. What's going to get out you're ready there? To, uh, what was that? I was going to do a segue, but you interrupted me, which is fine. With my own segue, so go back to your segue. I was going to say, you know what's going to be on the way soon enough is going to be some brand new BrickLink ADP <laughs> sets from Lego. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> welcome on in. Oh. Yeah, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't see where's the enthusiasm, everyone. Like, come on, guys. All, we're, the, all, we're the cool the, panel, don't you remember? These are the old people. So what They're happened? Boomer panel. There was a bunch of Lego ideas that got submitted a long time ago or relatively recently, and they did not make it through to the approval line and be on Lego store shelves. But Lego reached out to a handful of selected designers to potentially have their sets be made as a part of the ADP program that happened once again back in 2008. 18, 18, I think. Um, and now there are a variety of sets that are available to look at. 13 of these sets that get funding via uh, purchasing them on the given release date will be made into semi-official uh, Lego sets. There's a large variety here. No intellectual properties. A piece count ranging from 400 to 4,000 pieces no prices are given. These are not the final models. The designers have until May 31st to finalize their designs. And like I said before, the first 13 submissions that reach 3,000 at least pre-orders get their sets made through the program. The rest are scrapped. So this is what we're looking at here. A um, lot of different sets from a variety of different designers. Some have minifigures, some do not. Some of them are very old. Some of them are really recent. So I know Dan has talked about these ad nauseum. This is our first time talking about these on Beyond the Brick. So I guess we're going to go through, or I've talked about them on Between the Bricks as well. But we're going to go through and talk about, I guess, each of these because we got time to kill. So <laughs> we went through like 40 different submissions on Lego ideas last week, whatever it was. So we're, we're uh, just, just basically covering ideas news every week at this point. There's might so as much well, you too know, much, uh, uh, until we get more like official set details and stuff like this is what we got. You know, I think it's interesting that the so the threshold for the AFOL designer program, which is kind of very much what this program is based off of what, to get the set actually turned into a set i think it was a thousand pre-orders so it's much higher with these ones yeah mm. i thought it was three thousand uh in the, in the no. first run up might have been oh, a thousand actually oh, oh in the first lineup i'm sorry yeah yeah, the, yeah the first the, the first uh, series yeah. yeah so um now as far as i know Bricklink is still going to be handling the, you know, assembly of these sets. And if you go all the way to the very top, John, you, it gives you kind of an idea of the timeline that they're working with here. So between now and May 31st, they finalize the designs between June 1st and August 10th. That's when you can pre-order things. The production goes from September 2021 until whenever to when the sets are all done. Lego has said they want the first round of these uh, pre-orders to go out before Christmas, which is really awesome. So well, I'm assuming right. if you pre-order quickly, you would be in front of that queue compared to later in the queue, but I have no idea. So I have looked at this list a ton. I'm Brian, sure that's great. Have that's great, Brian. It's fantastic. But we have to acknowledge the fact that Dan has a doggo. I know. I know. <laughs> oh, just notice that. I was actually... <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a happy oh, boy. Dan gets the full screen for that. Look at the doggo. Yeah. Best dog. Beautiful Cuddly puppy. one. What's his name? Uh, <coughs> hey, oh, man. Uh, this is Flick. That's awesome. Flick is great. 
We love Flick. <laughs> Doggo. As you were saying, Brian, something about Lego and... Doom. So there's a whole bunch of different <laughs> ideas on the docket, and these are them. The first I, one is the train... Wait, wait a second, wait a second. My, I'm going to interrupt you one more time. Before we get into this, I would like to say that I Jeff's am not going to go fan. on an old man rant. I am. Thank you. Old man yells out cloud. Pretty much. I would like to say that I am not a fan of Kickstarters from multi-billion dollar companies such as Fortune 500 companies like Hasbro, Mattel, now Lego. All this is is a Kickstarter with extra steps. That being said, I will support one of these projects. That's all I had to say. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, okay, Br Brian. <gasps> Let me just say one thing. Don't, no, I'm not saying I, 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 I have to say, yeah, like, yeah, Lego has the budget to make this without anybody's support, but I think it's more about finding the, the demand for these. Because, like, pre order is just you're paying a bit early for the set, which nope, you're going to buy nope, anyway. No, nope, nope, 100% you know disagree. The, disagree the, that? the demand is there because these all got voted and ideas to 10,000. All right. What about the. Sometimes well, that's not it necessarily doesn't necessarily demand though. I mean, people right. people will vote for things all, for all sorts of reasons. It doesn't if, mean they're yeah, actually going to follow Like you have to put your money where your mouth is, right? So you can <laughs> vote, and you may not buy it. If you there's know, so anything like I've more... learned by making merchandise for the mom squad or coming out with this thing or that thing, a lot of people, a lot of people say they're going to buy something, and right. then you have to factor in as a business uh, in general. Half of those people would actually buy it, and that, or half those people add it into their cart, and then half of those people actually buy the thing. So, Brian, I don't want to disagree with you, and I don't want to shed bad light on your merchandise. Lego is a twenty billion dollar profit a year company. Well, right, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to have the same draw from one product that actually gets into ideas compared to one of these. Like these, these all. Technically, all of these got the same level of support from yep. all of the community. Voting is free, buying costs money. True. So all of these are technically on the same. Every idea set that's ever come out is on the same caliber. So like you, but at the end of the day, what's going to penetrate through the actual Lego fans and then go into the mass market? Like clearly Seinfeld was made not because Lego fans are like, oh, I want Seinfeld. So, oh my God, Seinfeld. It's because it's going to be put onto the, the, the magazines that people are going to end up purchasing that have an article about Seinfeld. Oh, I want to reminisce my yeah. you know, early 20s. Like, it, it's all different things like that. So as much as, like for example, one on here, Seasons in Time, makes sense, and I think should have absolutely been made into a Lego Ideas, that doesn't mean it was going to be you know, more successful than some of these other projects or, or otherwise. So I think okay. it's still a situation where people are like, oh, well... I like it enough to vote for it, which takes all of literally five seconds, but I don't like it enough to drop 200 bucks on it. Uh, so the five second thing, I think that's uh, inaccurate. There's been problems with the Lego Ideas website with logging on for like the last three months. Like when it comes to like voting for their stupid anniversary set, like it took me 10 minutes to literally backtrack my way through just so that I could log in. So it is longer than five seconds, but I see what you're saying. I agree with you to a point, and I disagree with you to a point. But let's let's review these things and let's see what we're gonna spend money on. The first one is the train station Savid Studgate by Bricky Bricks eighty two. This is clearly a massive set. Yep, I want it. Design of this. Okay, is all Mike. Of, all let, of the let, Let's establish something here. You want a lot of things, Mike. Oh, yeah. What's so, your threshold? We got to come up with a threshold here. I should change my name to I want it on the screen. Like, yeah. You, you so, it. like, what do you... You want everything, right? But what do you love? What are you like? Bam. Di like, what do you... What is it? What, which which one of these is it going to be? Is it is it the train station? I, or actually, I, I don't really... Yeah, good point. I don't have one that I... Like, oh, my God. Yes. Uh, this one is probably top three for me. Um, but it's not like... I would throw my I wouldn't throw my money on the screen for this one, but I it might it might be actually too big, so I'm gonna rather listen to the community and see what what people say when in terms of voting with their wallets. Um, but yeah, I I would consider supporting this one quite a bit. Yeah. 
I think the a glass of, portions of the train station are super cool. Like the the kind of dome at the top and then the big curved walls. Um, even like the the kind of they've got like the table section outdoor, like eating areas there, the raised section. Mm -hmm. Uh I think it it has a, a lot of really neat um like your Euro European style train station mm -hmm, elements mm -hmm. to it that I'm not even I'm not a big train person uh for the trains themselves, but I, I this train yeah. station uh, definitely appeals to me. But, but that's something that you would have to burning. ask yourself too, is that like when a set like this is going to be possibly be made, you know, let's look for the three things. How unique is it? How impressive are the is the build itself? And what new design or, or technique does it bring to the table? Like the dome thing that Joshua mentioned, the arch windows on the side of that. It has those things, but it's as far as uniqueness goes, the color scheme and everything else is there too. It just doesn't get my heart going, you know. That's it. Um. Yeah, it's cool. It's pushing that peace threshold limit, man. Four, so it's between four hundred and four thousand. Um, some people either love that dome at the top or they hate it. And this one, I, you got to think about. It's kind of unfair in some cases because some of these sets, they're a lot cheaper, so they're a lot easier to fund because yeah. three thousand votes. So this one, easily two fifty plus. So. Yeah. <sighs> I don't know. But isn't that the compromise we're willing to take in this thing? Because I think the the true winners of this lineup will be those sets who are relatively affordable and yet deliver uh, in terms of uniqueness, displayability. I think this one might be too much of the high end spectrum. Yeah. For it to be successful, but you know, as you said, three thirteen projects will qualify if they get funded. So this just might be one of those high ends among those thirteen. And yeah, the monorail like, that they did last, that they did did on the initial release was up there too, with like parts and everything else and price and whatnot. So, you know, who knows? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of big ticket items in this lineup here. A lot. By the way, isn't that designer the same guy that did the the police station before it was made a modular? Bricky bricks eighty two. Is that know. the same guy? I'm not sure. Maybe I can't keep track. There's so yeah, many like, of the just, designers the, that have multiple sets that yeah, get the name rings the bell for me. Yeah. All right. So when I saw that the seasons in time calendar was on here, I got up out of my chair and said, yes, 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 please. Yes. Did thank you. Do the you. arm pump. Can, yes, can you, you, you reenact that for us, Brian? I don't have the energy to do that. Don't give me the full <laughs> screen. I don't, it's, it's a, we're just starting here, John. You gotta get me warmed up. All right. Brian, you can we at least get an arm pump in full screen? Like Jeff, I don't listen to you. So I, yeah, I was, I was even, asking, not telling. We have the seasons and time calendar that goes through each of the days, months, and, and days of the week. And this is even more fleshed out than what the initial idea was. I was, sorely disappointed when this didn't get put through lego ideas i thought it was a massive mistake i see this here i am absolutely buying this the builds mini builds are excellent and i can't wait to see this uh on my shelf by the end of the year mm -hmm. I, it's a I, fantastic I, desk piece for sure i should also mention i don't know again going back to the the adp program that bricklink did originally if it's anything like that those sets uh once once they stop selling them, like every single one of those sets has gone up massively on the aftermarket. So if you just as someone, you know, if you're a fan out there and you're kind of trying, you're on the fence about some of these, you probably want to pull the trigger because if it, down the road you ever decide that you want to pick one of these up, if it's anything like the ADP program, it's crazy how how expensive, uh, you know, double or more for most of those, uh, a lot of those sets now. Yeah, just too good. Just covered um, how he got the castle. Uh, that was released, and he spent. Well, he didn't ever say it, but on this on the thumb thumb, it was like five hundred bucks, and it's like, holy crap! Like, geez, Louise, you know, that's secondary market, crazy. Yeah, when it when it came out, it's a kick to the pants. Yeah. So I I love this set. I I think I'm I'm curious to see how it's going to work with the twisting of the knobs on the different months and whatnot. All of those pieces, I'm assuming, are going to be stickers, so it's going to be a little bit of, bit of a pain, but that's fine for me. Um, I think this is an awesome set that could absolutely stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with the likes of uh, the typewriter, which is still a weird one uh, for me. Uh, the globe. Um, yeah, I forgot it's coming, actually. Huh? Interesting. 
Yeah, I agree, Brian. I th I've always thought ever since I first saw this uh, idea how unique it was. Um, and just, I mean, not only the fact that it's an actual calendar that you can use to tell what day it is, uh, but how great all of the builds are and all the little details in there. Yep. Yeah, I think it's going to be a very good utility piece for any like nerd's desk. I, I can see it in a lot of Lego studios, like right close next to you. We have the 1950s diner hmm. over here. Um, it's a classic 50s style retro diner. Now, this one does have an interior on it, and it's really nice. Um, comes with the car, Octane sticker, diner logo at the very top right there. So it, I think it's cool. Well, it is it a diner or a gas station? Uh, diner. Then why does it have a gas pump out front? That you can get gas at. I think that's, that's kind of the way it was in California in the 50s, actually, I think. Like you had a little gas station, a little like diner with burgers and stuff. All right. Um, but yeah, I, this one hits too close to me, f to the uh, modular diner. In yeah, same, same style, same. Might I be, love might this be too set, close. though. I th I've always been a big fan of these types of diners, especially like if you're ever driving down the road and you just see like one of those all metal uh, you know, old diners from this mm -hmm. era. Uh, yeah. It's just such a cool, unique look to me. So I'm, I'm a big fan. This would definitely be one of my top picks from I think all of these sets we're looking at. I think it, I think it looks neat. Like besides my criticism, I was at a diner or a gas station, but I like this the shape of it. I like the car of it. I wish it wasn't a render. Besides that, it looks you know pretty cool. Pretty like it would fit in with uh, the rest of the modulars that came that Lego does in that time era. LME Toys building your Jeff one brick at a time. Ash Daddy with a 1999. Thanks, Ash Daddy. Thank you. Thank you, Ash Daddy, for your support as always. Daddy. Appreciate it. Okay, enough for screen. <laughs> the next That's one up. The next, I know. Next one up is the Kakapo, right, Dan? Get the Kakapo? Kakapo, yeah. Oh, it's New Kakapo. Zealand species. Okay. Kakapo. The, 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 the kakapo. Do you actually um, see those like in it. your place on, outside? Uh, no. These are, are mostly a South Island bird, uh, West Coast South Island. Um, they are a parrot and uh, they are very, very cheeky birds. There's a place called the Haast Pass that you can drive over. And if you stop there where the kakapo population live, they will crawl all over your car. They will start pecking at the rubber. And they'll start pulling things off it. They, yeah, <laughs> what? yeah, it's a true story. You Google it up and have a look oh, and watch really? videos of wow. Kakapo pulling the rubber out of car windows and all sorts. Yeah. What? So there was like pigeons in Poland. New Zealand yeah. might not have street gangs, but apparently they have birds that have militarized. Yeah. That's right. Well, we have we have seagulls. California seagulls can terrorize you. I got a, I got beaten by one trying to snag a, a croissant from my hand like a month ago. <laughs> I, yeah, I was like eating a croissant and a seagull just attacked me and 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 hit me with her beak trying to to snag it. So yeah, we have seagulls <laughs> that snatch yeah snatch food right out of your hands as well. And mm -hmm. there's a, a an Aust I think it's an Australian native bird that we have in new zealand as well called a magpie and it's a black and white bird that's kind oh. of like a small crow isn't that like an and australian thing yeah well they they will swoop you when they're nesting yeah. uh yeah they will swoop and attack you if you walk past like wherever their nests are and stuff they're nasty little birds Person. it's almost as bad as swans mm. Mm. So, yeah, so the guy the guy that built this um, Kakapo, I've met him a couple of times at shows around the country, and he actually he has a whole range of New Zealand native birds that he's built. So it's not just the Kakapo. That mm -hmm. was the one that he put to ideas, but he's got a whole range. And I've been trying to encourage him to to do a book and, and maybe slide some instructions into the book and sell the book. But um, he's a very, very talented builder. Looks like it, at least from this anyway. It's a pretty cool build. On the build, there's uh, little alternate outfits as well. There's a little top hat and a bow tie that can go on the bird as well. <laughs> yeah. Very cute. Yeah. Um, and he, d he did a, chi a chick of it as well. Uh, you know, a, a yes. tiny little wee version. So very, very cute. Um, this one could be, I want to say like 600 pieces. 
just about. So on the cheaper end, uh, more in inexpensive end, I should say. Oh, so it says it, uh, the bird doesn't fly. It's a flightless bird. Yeah, they no, don't they fly. don't fly. No. Oh, okay. Is this like boat does not float? <laughs> so they they just jump over your car, like? Yeah, pretty much. Like, oh my. I, I think they can sort of um, like hop. Like, yeah, they hop and they're a bit like a chicken where they can oh, okay. sort of, you know, hop and sort of move over a short distance. Um, okay. Unlike a kiwi, which is a genuinely flightless bird that actually can't fly at all. Uh, that is a ground dwelling bird. Kakapo spend a lot of time just, yeah, crawl, you know, hopping around and, yeah, doing Can their you, uh, thing. Jang in here for this discussion. Uh, I remember when he reviewed the uh, the bird set years ago. He mentioned uh, how into um, birds he was, and uh, that's been something that he spent a lot of time studying. So uh, he, I'm sure he could have an in depth review of this. Yeah, it's probably okay. very niche, though. You know, it, outside of New Zealand, probably I not too many people have heard of it. But th there could be enough people that just see, oh, it's a cute bird, and then it's not. Two hundred dollars, like most of the other things on here, so they might be like, "Ah, that's cute." Yeah. So there's a uh, say it one more time, Dan, for me. I don't want to mess it up. Kakapo. Kakapo. Okay, there's a kakapo. Are you still waiting for your penguin, Brian? Oh, uh, every single day of my life. But in the meantime, we may get the castle in the forest. Oh, I I was Again. surprised that this was the only <laughs> castle set I think in all all of these designs. Um, and it is cool. I like how it's very much like a throwback to the forestman type sets. You know, you've got the trees. It's sort of, sort of like a hidden uh, castle idea a little bit. So I think that's kind of neat. Um, but it's it's disappointing that it's not a, a bigger, more fleshed out castle design. It's more yeah. like a, like an outpost, like a watchtower. I agree with uh, both of you. It do, it reminds me of um, the forest temple from Ocarina of Time for some reason. Maybe it's just the stairs. I don't know why. But it does look pretty great. I mean, as far as castles and everything else goes, it brings a unique situation to the table. Most of the time, everybody is like, well, we need those 3D base plates again. But this guy's obviously built a castle that would represent those castles with the 3D base plates pretty well. I mean, he's got mm -hmm. the terrain there. He's got detailing on the castle. He's got the cool horse there. Uh, I don't see any minifigures, but my eyes are horrible. So who knows? But it looks pretty cool. Well, I, I'm probably going to put money down on this one, if I'm being honest, because it looks that awesome. It looked great thanks to the blacksmith shop. It's yeah, gonna, I think it's going to get funded 100%. One to support for me. Also, it's we've got a request funded. in the chat as we, uh, when we get to, <laughs> we get to the, <laughs> the Bionicle uh, We can mute Jeff for the entire rest of the podcast. No, we're not going to do that. <laughs> but, but for the, no, for the Bionicle part, um, you may need to mute all of us, actually. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Like scream in that little boxes here on the left. Yeah, uh, I, I, I like the, the look of the set. It looks a little cluttered for me, but that's a part of the design choice. So I mean, at this point, Lego, <clears throat> take a hint, you know. Right. Uh, and it's gonna get funded hundred percent. Yeah. This one, this one's making the list. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you that. Blacksmith shop's doing really well, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, barely keeping it in stock. Yeah. No. Looking at mine over there, <laughs> how I haven't built it yet. <laughs> uh, this is the Winter Chalet. Uh, this is like a, a ski lodge sort of a vibe here with this one, but it is a chalet. It's got uh, multiple rooms. Like It's more like a house sort of a vibe on the inside there. Um, it's like um, it's like a Airbnb or something like that, like yeah. a, a cozier cottage, a bigger cottage. Yeah. Yeah, so my my issue with this one, who you know, someone who is a, a fan of the Winter Village wine, this is much bigger than any of the Winter Village sets by far. And I think this would have been better presented as if it were a proper ski lodge instead of it being just a big house, because that doesn't really fit appropriately with the other ones, but it's still a cool looking model. I don't love the the shape of it for whatever reason. I think the front could be a little more I, I don't know if it's like less flat, like just something about it is not like doing it for me in this color, which is also an issue with the entirety of this uh, lineup is Lego is making these designers work with what already exists. They cannot use uh, newly created uh, colors for parts or anything like that. So maybe if this were a different color or something, 
it, I would feel a little bit differently. But this as it is right there, I'm not over the moon for, but mm. I like Christmas time stuff. So it's also a, a dollhouse design. We don't see the back, but it's on yes. the back. Yep. I I don't know. I it looks neat. It reminds me of a thing from a James Bond movie for some reason, but it's not something that has me thrilled or tickled. Right. Um, now, this could be similar in size to what Home Alone could be in terms of a Christmas yeah. sort of build. Good so I, I can see why this made it into the uh, Bricklink program as opposed to Lego Ideas. I think there is room for something like this, but I think compared to a lot of other things on here, this might not see the, um, yeah. the funding. Did you guys see, by the way, um, JK Brickworks, who's also in this program, but he made a new Lego Ideas submission with the ski lift? Yeah. Yes. That's, very, that, very that's like same same topic, but more like uh, approachable, smaller, and and functional. It's really good. So I, I just, think I just chatted with him on a video here on Beyond the Brick a few days ago about yeah, that yeah. new project. If anyone wants to check it out, yeah. It's, I mean, his it's, his work is always amazing. Yes. Uh, but yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, two projects are in this lineup from him as well. So. Yeah. So there's a chalet. The next one that we have is the working waterfall, which. As I discovered on uh, B2B TV on Friday, or for us Friday night, uh, the waterfall is a trickle of mm -hmm. one by one translucent studs. That whole blue front there doesn't move. This one, John, if you want to, this one I think is worth clicking into if you want to take a look at it. There's a video down at the very bottom and it shows what the waterfall looks like. And <laughs> so just take a look at it. Um, I, I thought the whole thing moved. So you're saying it does no, not? Okay. No, no I think there's like it, a flow like, of yeah. bricks behind the, the plastic. Oh, so it's literally one by one translucent studs that do that. Oh, For yeah. some reason, I thought the whole... like Right, because whole... a lot of people have built waterfalls mm. like that. It's kind of on treads and the, the whole thing will, will move. Yeah. Yeah, that's not as impressive as I thought it was going to be. I thought the whole front of it would be a kind of rotating conveyor belt. Yeah, I think yeah, that's what that's everybody a bummer. thinks. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of yeah. a bummer. Yeah, yeah, so seeing this as it is right here, I think we talked about, you know, if you added more studs, would that work to be a bit more of a waterfall instead of a bit of a trickle, as it, it really kind of is right here. But there is a little section at the top there. You can kind of notice it sometimes where some studs can get stuck a little bit. So I feel like if you added a whole bunch more, it could get clogged up pretty easily, which is why there's only a few in there to make it work pretty smoothly. Uh, the back is not super duper concealed. There is some character details back there, like the minecart and you know the the ladder and all that. But the whole mechanism for what makes it work is very very exposed. So yeah, I don't like that. Uh, I, I think the article. noise alone would be enough for me not yeah. to bother. This, this and video. interestingly as well, that's got a, sorry, I don't mean to cut you off, but that, that, I've just noticed now that's got an M motor as well, the old version. So are they still currently available or would that have to be upgraded to a um, the newer motors perhaps? I have no idea. But yeah, you yeah. can see like the studs kind of get stuck right there. So if you had a bunch of them, that could become a problem. This looks like a GBC with extra steps. Yeah, it very much reminded me of a GBC module, which is something we should be getting from ideas at some point. Yeah, yeah I'm surprised we don't. I'm uh, surprised or... Lego haven't started a whole GBC line yet. That would be that. Oh, that'd, that'd just be a money maker. Yeah, yeah it would be. Ash Daddy says it's called Laminar Flow. Oh yeah, for sure. I think just compared to a lot of the other ideas projects that are on here, this one because it isn't as impressive as you're led to believe just by looking at a picture of it isn't going to get the funding for it. No, it's not. Yep. You're right. So thank you, John, for clicking into that one and showing it off there. Uh, the next one on the list, I actually forget entirely. <laughs> entirely. I've looked at this list a bunch of times. Oh, the dive shop. So if you like that fisherman's uh, store, you like boats, there you well, go. I think there are several that are very like reminiscent of the fisherman's store, yes, isn't there? Sir. Wait, yeah. isn't that the same uh, designer as the fishing store? Can you click on the designer? I, I, I the name rings the bell. Oh, you can, you, it doesn't go to his profile. Okay, 
I mean, we, we gotta check his Brickling profile, Brick, um, Lego Ideas profile, but I think that might be the same person. I like that. I like it very much. I don't necessarily want to spend money on it. I think I'd just rather build it here at home, but it looks cool. I, so to that end, from what I understand, because we were talking to Brent Waller the other night, from what I understand, they are selling the sets and instructions. So you can choose if you want to buy the set or instructions. Oh, I love that. That's oh, great. So, so even if it gets to 3000 it, they will still sell instructions. And if it doesn't make 3000 they're still selling instructions. So you can choose which one you want to get, the set or instructions. That's great. Oh, I didn't know that. That's awesome. That's fantastic. I didn't know that, Dan. Well, that's according to Brent. And Brent's got a, and he's the one that did the seasons in time. He's got a couple of uh, 10,000. He's got yeah, a couple of he, sets out there. Yeah. He's had two produced, I think. He's had the Ecto 1 and uh, Seinfeld, which is coming later this year. Yep. And he, his bonsai tree did reach 10,000, but obviously that was bad timing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kind of like that guy that did the police, uh, police station modular. Yeah, right. Wah, right. Wah. <laughs> yep. So I love the dive store. I, I do love the dive store. I think it would. I can just picture now having the the old fishing store, the dive store, and one that we're going to look at very soon. Uh, you know, as a as a whole seafront mock spread out with. Oh, I think it would just be brilliant. Well, what about the? Uh, the shrimp shack from Hidden Side, Dan. Do you think that would mesh well with I, those? I think, uh, yeah, I think you could add that in just yeah. uh, with a bit of modification and stuff and do a really nice 70s, 80s style, you know, seafront type thing. Yeah, seaside, fun. whatever. Yeah. Um, Jonathan, in the chat, you can find these sets on Bricklink, which is the designer program. People will crowdfund them. And those that get successful, 13 of them will actually be sent to those who supported those monetarily. So brickset.com or brickling.com, you can check out the, the, live, there it is. the lineups. If you like fishing, there's a great fishing boat. Looks very nice. I love the color palette on this one. We're going to need a bigger boat. That would yes, go great indeed. with the previous one, actually. Yeah, totally. Go great with the old fishing um, shack mm -hmm. and everything else. Yeah, that looked great. Yeah. The, the yeah, only downside like to this... Too. Yeah, the only downside to this, though, is he's going to have to do a bit of reworking to work with in the current Lego palette. There's some colored stuff there that doesn't exist. Yeah, the brown hole pieces, right? Is that what you're talking about? Or are you talking about the other? Uh... Um, I think some of that uh, teal stuff doesn't exist, or that may now. The gold propeller certainly doesn't. Um, yeah. The hats in, in that orange don't exist. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen fishing um, fishing poles in uh, the, the light blue gray. That's if that's what they are. They, actually, they might be aerials, but no, yeah, there's yeah. there's just a few bits in there that I think he's going to have to work a bit. Well, yeah. Again, they have until the end of May to finalize all these designs. So Correct. you're Correct. really just going to have to. I mean, us looking at these right now. We're, we're doing it because it's new, but to get the most accurate read on everything, we should be looking at these on May 31st to see what exactly is available. Um, well, don't worry. We'll, we'll have plenty of time on that, that week's episode as well. Yes. <laughs> well, that, I was going to say, that that's that week's blooming stream sorted out, right? <laughs> right, exactly. You know, we're gonna see, we're, we're going to take a look at what gets funded first, which I think the next one... All you Bionicle fans, you better, you know, put your money where your mouth is. Oh, um, they're going to show up. This one is going to be so I mean, massive. those kids don't have credit cards. So, Honestly, yeah. I'm, I'm excited for, for Bionicle fans <laughs> to have this opportunity. I think it's good that they uh, that they get this, and I'm glad they included it. So hopefully hopefully this will help uh, satiate some of the Bionicle fans out there for a bit. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, I, I still don't believe that this set – exemplifies everything that Bionicle is and what the fans could possibly want. But it is good that there's a Bionicle set in here and it gives them a chance to, yeah, put their money where their mouth is. And this, the, the issue with this set, though, is that it doesn't get in the, the casual Bionicle fans because they like the form factor of the action figures in the canister, in the whatever. 
this is for someone who knows the lore of Bionicle and wants to have a, a tribute set for that. As someone who has built Bionicle before and had it as a kid, I have no clue what's going on here. So I don't. I'm not gonna buy it, even for the yeah, walls. I'm not gonna buy it. That's a good it. point. I don't think a Bionicle set for real Bionicle fans will not be successful without Bionicle pieces in it. Yep. Uh, let's be like Bionicle was like lore and, and story on one side, but in majority it was a system of bricks. Yes. Um, that people loved, not necessarily everything else about it. Yeah. I mean, the, the lore is actually a big thing, as I learned, but uh, I think it was because of the system as well, because of the, how how it worked. Yeah, so I think a lot of Bionicle fans would agree with that. Uh, Falk in the chat says, I better be in this. Unfortunately, my brother, you're not. Uh, <laughs> you, you do not have your time to shine. Uh, they have to have brick-built characters in here, so no custom parts, which I think this set would have very much so benefited from. But yeah, uh, uh, no. Uh, Bionicle fans will complain no matter what. Well, I mean, hey, if, if this set doesn't get funded and made... Put it to rest. That's it. Like this, this is literally Lego being like, "All right, guys, let's go." So, I'll be stunned if this doesn't get funded. I mean, I, do you I, really think the Bionicle fans aren't going to come out and? I, no, they will. I'm curious. Uh, a question that I have to follow up on all these is two questions. One, which ones would you get? And two, which ones do you think we're going to get funded first? I think this is going to be one of the first ones. Most likely, yeah. By the way, any reason we don't have that 90th anniversary results yet? I mean, it's been a while, right? Lego is not I, saying. I almost guarantee you it's not Bionicle. I think that there. Most likely, yeah. I think there was somebody, like, uh, I think maybe the designer of this set was like asking, like, hey, does this like disqualify Bionicle from that vote? And he's like, oh, no, 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 no. Bionicle's still on the table. And, and, and Lego selected no. these people to part, like, they reached out to them. To participate yeah. they, they were pre like more sets were selected for this series but those are the guys that are willing to to work on that and and be part of it to me way. that doesn't represent bionicle nope at all it, it doesn't like so. tr in true form not no and you know yep all right so what's what are we is it, hey this one this one i'm excited for baby i don't I don't understand this set because it looks exactly like the saloon. Hey, from hey, the hey no, it doesn't. Okay, no. Let me tell you, John. Oh, click into this one for me if you could, because because oh, your brother's a non-believer. Oh, look at look at that. You think that's different, Joshua? Oh, see, well, this image looks a lot like it, but with the other one, where's the yeah. other image we were just looking at? That oh, one. see, this, this looks different. Oh, oh, so it's a movie. That, yeah, oh, I didn't realize that. It's just one photo. Yeah. Joshua, didn't you talk to the creator of the movie set? Uh, uh, <laughs> not, uh, not this one. we didn't not not this set. Okay. So I'm telling you, if you put Johnny Thunder as a minifigure in there with like a cowboy outfit, you got a studio set right there. But this is much cooler now that it's a uh, now that it's like a movie set like this because just the photo of the saloon, I was like, that looks exactly like Jonas's design for ADP. So I was surprised yeah. why they were doing that again. It does look neat. I'm going to throw money at this. I like it a lot. I like the concept yeah. of it. This one I is different cool. in that it cracks open instead of it being like a corner sort of a unit and the oh. color on the outside is different, but the, the inside of it is different as well. But mm -hmm. the fact that it's a movie set, yeah, 100% sells it for me. I'm going to buy it um, and add. Hopefully, I, I don't know if these will have minifigures in them. I think a lot of these should have minifigures, but if not, I'll just buy my own and do it up from there i think he's gonna have minifigures you know I, like, I've, got the, I've got the adp saloon displayed with all of the the robbers and cavalry men from the western theme so it you know you can always go that route yeah. yeah that's really cool though i like it i like the detail of it i like the fact that we get the lights the big fan the the rolling camera there that's just i don't know it's pretty just cool all around yeah That's all we got. All right. Well, uh, that's um, my... gentlemen, cool. I'm going to have to like interrupt real quick. I, I got to go actually because I have to help with my kiddos. There's stuff going on. So I shall see you in the next one and good luck with everything. Uh, pretty cool stream as always. Thanks cool. for stopping by. Thank you. Yeah, I'll, see you. I, I'll talk to you later. Okay. Appreciate it, guys. Bye. Space Troopers is the next one. Um, yep. Yep. <laughs> 
I don't know. Is this based on? It's not based on anything really. It's just just a general space theme. They slapped some classic colors on it and some red, and were like, "This will be a good throwback to space sets from back in the day." Yep. Well, we need uh, we need uh, Pazoom here to give us the the real down low on this, but clearly, it's got Dan excited. <laughs> 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 Uh, I look the ship itself looks okay. It kind of looks like the drop ship from Alien. Um, I'm not sold on the red dudes, but according to Brent, this one has been around for a long time, and it did have uh, space minifigures in it in its original submission. Um, but as Brian has said, you have to use current parts in the current palette, and there's no classic space figures in it, so it had to be a adapted. Well, I mean, in yeah. theory, there's there's new updated classic space minifigures out there. I mean, well, yeah, yeah. So that that's that's their, I guess that's their um their fallback. But I don't know. Yeah, it reminds me of Starship Troopers, um, the book rather than the film, because in the books they had mechs that were a lot like that, and their their dropships were more capsules. And anyway, that's what it reminds mm -hmm. me of. It's a neat concept, but. I wish there was a little tab at the very bottom of these submissions that showed what the original was just for the sake of comparison. Yeah. Because, I mean, like, bots are cool and all, just, I don't know. It just doesn't, you know, I'm, I'm a huge space fan and everything else, but I'm a critical space fan, and that just doesn't, I don't know. That's not a good space set, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Criti critically speaking, I don't like the red because red never existed in classic space when it was the gray, blue, and yellow, black. You know, yes, Mtron was a theme all unto itself within the classic space palette, but not in this sense. Right. And um, the closest thing you got was Red Spaceman. So. Yeah. And I think that's where they're trying to go with it, but it kind of, I don't know. It, yeah, it throws you off a little bit. It's the sort of thing that I feel like you could just you could build that if you're a neo classic space builder, you could build it easy enough, or something similar. Yep. Yeah. Hi, Alyssa. Next ones we have are the Pursuit of Flight and the Particle Accelerator, both by J.K. Brickworks. Um, the left one, I think, should have absolutely gotten ten thousand and be on store shelves initially. Yeah. For sure. Mm -hmm. I don't know why it wasn't. Um, but this will absolutely get made. The oh, Pursuit yeah. of Flight is so cool. I love that. Like the uh, the World War One era planes, um, the movement to it, the little like micro landscape below, uh, like including the different planes like that uh, is a really neat idea. I, I this would definitely be a, a, a purchase support for me. Mm. I, I won't be buying it, but I do hope it gets made um, just because it's a great set. Like, you know, it fills the need for a lot of people that are, World War One enthusiasts and airplane enthusiasts. Because I mean, obviously <laughs> that's the Red Baron, and you know whatever. But yeah. But using the mechanism, you could, you know, make a bunch of different alt builds, and we've talked about it before. But you know, a trench run. Yeah, you know. Jake. Jake has done that before, hasn't yeah. he? Or am I yeah, he's, yeah, I'm pretty sure I've seen it. So yeah. yeah, there's a bunch of alternatives you could do with that one. Yeah. That's cool. And the particle accelerator, I'm just going to be honest here and say not a chance in hell. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's cool. It's science-y, and I'm sure it works great, but, like... If I had to pick one over the other for JK, I'd pick the Pursuit yeah, of Planets. Planets. Yeah. Yeah. Hands down. The, par the particle accelerator is just so neat. Like, yeah, how many people are, are actually interested in having just a model of that sitting... If you're a scientist who works on that or in that, you know, closely in that field, but is your average person? I mean, I get things like like the space shuttle and stuff obviously has a much broader appeal than something like this. Mm. Yeah, that's what I was trying to say. Yeah, it's just okay. The only thing that I would get the particle accelerator for would be is if I was going to display it at shows because I think because it's kinetic, you know, it would be a cool thing to have at a show. People would watch it. They'd look at it. But at home, uh, you're not going to run it, are you? The noise alone would do your head in again. Yeah. 
Well, there next. we go. <laughs> uh, <laughs> next up on the docket are two other sets <laughs> that are going to be made yet to show us, but I'm Rick sure Link. it has a I think, I think John Yep, here we go. <laughs> Any minute now, we're just going to... Yep, here it comes. John's getting us hyped for these next two John's sets. Not, he's not he's just, having an issue. It's not... He's not able to... He moved in. It's not It's not moving. Oh, uh, uh, maybe unshare the screen and share it again? See if this fixes well, it. Let's hope it is. If not, I can pop it open. I got it open, too. Oh, there yeah, we go. There it is. Lego store modular version based on uh, probably... Um, uh, flagship store is sort of a design. I like it. Yeah, it's the people at the top give this like a steampunk vibe, which is yep. it's kind of it's it's a unique feel from the exterior. For sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have my bias because I've worked at a Lego store, so I like the interior. I like how bright it is, but obviously there's some um, lighting that, that has been implemented into it to give it that extra boost. Um, I like the overall look of it. I like that it's a modular, so you could put that into your city if you wanted to. I think more things like this, if it were to come to this program, um, would be welcomed for people that want more modular type things without waiting once a year for something. So a bit too self-marketing and meta for a set I'd buy. Yeah, that that's probably why. Like, I, I've worked at a store, so I like it. But a lot of people are like, yeah, why would I buy this? This is dumb the build is actually pretty neat too i just looked through the different pictures of it and uh the the, the back opens up kind of like a dollhouse but just like a little section of it and uh it's pretty solid all around i you know we're all biased towards lego in some way or another because here we are and i i don't think i would i would get it personally i sorry it looks cool and all and i, and I hope it does well and i hope it you know Goes the extra mile, but yeah. Also, one of the few sets that we've seen with minifigures in it so far. I'm not a fan. That's fair. <laughs> I'm not a fan. There's, <laughs> there's, just, there's just something about it. I think it's it, to me, it looks quite plain. Um, I, I, if I'm going to be honest here, the 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 two blocks on the front on the footpath trigger me because at what Lego store? Do they right. actually have giant blocks on the footpath blocking everybody from walking, you know, to and fro? They would have been better mounted up on the top where the steampunk uh, looking um, gears are, in my opinion. But I don't know. There's just something about the building that just uh, it's it's not overly attractive. It just reminds me of the... Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> We have the ruined house next. Um, I mean, you put zombies in it, cool, but I don't think this. So this one being a render also, I think, uh, doesn't help it because the colors are very muted on all of these renders in general. You can clearly see the color differences uh, between the Lego store and something like this. Like it, the the tree, the what is it? The flowers on that tree in the ruined house. Those are like orange or like bright yellow, whatever. So it looks especially d bland and whatnot here, but I, I can't see this one getting made only by the comparison of everything else that we've seen in this lineup so far. It reminds me of the Blair Witch House. Yeah. Builds That's... like this, I'm always torn on. Like when, when I see a build like this at a convention or, you know, an ideas project, I don't know there are parts of it that definitely, I guess the, the architectural elements and how detailed built these types of builds are like ruined houses definitely appeal to me and like the, the, the skill it takes to build this, but I can never like in my head, I, I'm never quite sure. Like if this was a set, would I actually want something like this on display um, or not? And I kind of lean towards no. Um, but at the same time, again, there's some really fantastic kind of parts techniques and uh, details in there that, that do make it for a, a cool build. It'd be cool to have out at Halloween. You know, it's like a Halloween decoration, like inside your home. I don't know. That's true. It looks well, neat. We, already, we already have like the haunted house. Like, I think that's a better representation of 
like well, not, to not, me, that, not that it's different. It, it is different, but yeah. Basically, they're just making like a uh, ready-made set for uh, like World War II builders to just throw some Brickmania minifigs in there and, <laughs> and you're, you're good That's to go. It. Ain't nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Roll through that with a tank. <laughs> yes, you just, uh, just get a tiger tank com coming out that hole in the side there. <laughs> yeah. And or again, you know, the... It's going to require some modification because that tree trunk down in the bottom uh, front left there, no longer available. Such a brilliant part. I wish they'd bring that back. But um, yeah, I don't. I just I don't see the point of it. Apart from what Josh said, you know, chuck some brick mania on there and make it a, <laughs> a war tank. zone. Yeah, like a tank blowing out the the hole there with its cannon or whatever. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's the only use I can see for it. <laughs> I, uh, Ghostbusters mock, you know, the Ghostbusters are investigating a spooky house. I don't, I don't, I got nothing. What's next? <laughs> uh, the observatory and the exploratorium. You like space? Womp womp. This, in my opinion, is. Awesome. Um, it's not a throw money at for me, but it's a Wait, that's really that? neat. Uh, the, the the observatory. Okay. Like I I'll, I want to get the instructions for this just because I think it looks really cool. Uh, observatories have always been neat, and it just I don't know. I really like it. Uh, the ADP program had a observatory tower type build, didn't it? I want to say there was the yeah. science building that was more cartoonish and almost steampunkish <laughs> than yeah. Yeah, yeah, that I never quite understood exactly what was the I guess the overall idea with that build uh, when when that when that set came out with the ADP um, and what, what exactly they were going for there. It reminded me of Time Cruisers, which is you know <laughs> oh, a cursed no, oh, line no. around here. So our yeah, apologies besides... to the builder of that set. Aww. <laughs> um, the observatory, I I like. I think it, it's a it. Definitely is nicely designed, but I not something I would pick up. Yeah, I agree. Brian doesn't do anything for me, unfortunately. All right. The Exploratorium has a lot going on with it. Um, a lot of these pieces, I don't believe, are made in the colors that they are. So there's a lot of tweaking that has to be done to it. This one, I believe, appeases or appeals to steampunk fans, but. I think steampunk fans would probably rather have a ship. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong compared to something like this, but I, I would, I, yeah, I would rather have a airship rather than whatever yeah. that is. That looks like a Ninjago city block, but for like a steampunk city that we don't have. Yeah. And the fact that it's a render, I mean, there's some cool building ideas in there. There's some, it's very unique and it's got all the techniques and all the three things that I mentioned before, but like, why? Like, you have to build on to it more, which is cool, great, fantastic, go for it. But, I mean, that is a singular piece by itself. That's for the guy that's like, well, time to build my steampunk city because I have hours and hours and all these chrome mm. and gold pieces that I don't ever use. But besides that... Yeah. Which sucks because it looks cool, but... Yeah. I look forward to the reworked version that's going to be totally different. Me too. Yes. <laughs> I'm, there's I'm just, just there's more so much in there that's not available. Here's that so nail <laughs> down the head. All right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to cheat. Brian, you and I talked about this one night at like two in the morning, the modular <laughs> construction site. And uh, you were not a fan, but I, uh, after looking at it a couple of times, I think that's really cool. I, I like that. Um, it's it's fantastic. I like the idea of it. Uh, I've seen people who have Lego cities that are totally unique uh, have a setup like this before, and I don't know. I just thought it was always cool to show like a build site in a Lego city. I don't know. Um, with this, I like the crane build. That crane is almost it's very very heavily inspired by a crane that came out in the early two thousands that I had as a kid, mm -hmm. and the building it's under construction which I think there's a reason when you have a, an actual Lego city set, you get a very small portion of an unfinished building, either meant to be elaborated on or just starting in your Lego city. But this is like halfway done. 
So there are some details on the inside, but I don't think enough details compared to the other things that are on this list to warrant it getting made. Maybe if the crane were a bit more of the focus and less of the building, but this is also pushing that 4,000 piece counter there. Um, and I mean, it's like, it's like almost an entire modular building with the crane at that rate. Yeah. So it's cool, but I don't think this one will get made. No, probably not. Now the next one, Dan's not a fan of. It's a big old <laughs> hater. That's okay. Just Dan is a man of class and taste. No, this <laughs> one is excellent. <laughs> Is this, it? Yes. John, Fine. play the video for the Club yeah, this, Aquarium, please. So, John, so, don't play the video. Don't uh, I remember seeing right this now. at a this the builder of this, I think might be from Texas. I know he had this on display at Brick Fiesta a couple of years ago, two or three years ago. Seeing it in person, I was really impressed with the technique and being uh as as you'll see in the video here with how it operates. I think this is a really neat little build. Look at that. Yeah. That's horrible. But the starfish spins with the fish. Come on now. Look at that. Come on, the okay. crab moves too. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, You're telling ooh. me what kid wouldn't love to see all the fish move? Come, come on. Come on. And at, and at such a small size, I think it could be a really great price point uh, that yeah. a lot of these sets don't hit. So I think that's a nice appeal of it as well. Do you know what it's as boring as? It's as boring what? as the NES TV going around in circles. Wow. Are you seriously? Right. Are seriously, you seriously? You're gonna, you're gonna watch that Are go you? around in circles for yes. a minute and a half. No. Just for just like Dan? playing with the Mario. You're gonna play with it for a minute and a half and you're never gonna touch it again. For, but Dan, that's going in the casket with me. Okay. <laughs> I love that thing with my life. But this also Brilliant. looks really cool just on display. Even when it's not moving, I think it's a really ni nice looking kind of small display piece. You know, the only reason I would buy that would be for the dive helmet, and that's not available. So you insulted me on so many levels right there, Dan. You like the NE the, the TV, the Mario, uh, this set. You you hit the triple. The triple <laughs> triple. I aim to please. Thanks, Dan. Look, but when you when you have the when you have the fish move around on the translucent poles, it hits the starfish and he spins. And then the build for the Eastern Island head, you you you're old people. Come on, you're curmudgeons, y'all. Look at I'm, so I'm with you, Brian. I I would definitely support this one. What does the chat think? Chat, back us up on this. This is a nice one. Wow, we're very divided here. All right, let's just forget it. Uh, All right, never mind. Yeah, that's a that's a fish tank. All right. Okay. What? Well, no, we can move on. It's fine. Chat sure? says it's amazing. No, I nobody in chat says right. that. No, the just nope. Nobody says it's amazing. Oh, except for that one person who just piped in with "It's glorious," <laughs> so that we put their chat the the thing up on the who's it's. Uh, and Franco says it's cool now, but he wasn't. Mm. <laughs> Chuck says put Mario <laughs> on the fish tank. It's a day one buy for me. <laughs> True, me too. See now all these people like it because they want to side with you and Joshua, Brian. They yeah, don't like because yeah, because we're people. the best. Sorry, no, it's Jeff. Because they yeah. don't like fat people. It's because they're like, oh, I'm Dan fat. and Jeff. Hello. Shut up! You're not in our weight class. Okay, we so can like, move beyond this part of the <laughs> what's, what, what's up next? What what, what do we got? We got no. this not Legend of Zelda set, and then the sheriff's set with the combination. <laughs> not Legend of Zelda branded set. Uh, yep, that's a that's a windmill that. Uh, you yep. put a Link minifigure in there, bam! Breath of the Wild. I'm telling I mean, you. it's true. It's, 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 it's kind alarming of. how much that looks like the the what is the stables from Breath of the Wild. It's got that same vibe. Yeah, yeah. it does. Yeah. But it, but it, that's also why I think it's a really cool design because it looks so much like that. I mean, uh, I I would I would definitely support this one as well. Uh, I think I think the kind of build up into the on the trees into the mountains with the big windmill idea is is a really cool idea. It certainly captures a Breath of the Wild. Okay. Um, and it <laughs> means. I was just about to say what uh, Chuck Schwa in the chat said. It would look great with the blacksmith. Yes. Or in a medieval type layout model display with other medieval stuff. I like it. I do like it. For sure. Yeah. It's better than the fish tank. Okay. Much, much better. Now, with the sheriff safe and the combination lock, is that pistol staying yes or no? No. Neither is the bottle of booze. 
Oh, oh I don't know. They've had bottles well, of, like Pirates of the Caribbean sets and stuff, though. I mean, they, they've done that. Yeah, it's, and it's, pistols. That's Many different. Pistols. Pirates are whimsical. You know, they drink the rum. And, uh, I don't <laughs> that's know. different than drinking <laughs> uh, whiskey in, in the West. If you're a sheriff and you're drinking whiskey, that paints a bad light on law enforcement in the Old West. Mm. I feel like I'm harping on singing the same song every single model. But again, this one here has a lot of stuff that's not available in the colors that they've got in this submission. And I think <clears throat> they would struggle to make it look as good with the current color palette. And just off the bat, that dial, that's not going to be printed. They don't have that in gold. They don't have that steering wheel in gold. Uh, they don't have the gold bricks that are on the inside. So... No, that's a good point, Dan. I mean, it's good to be realistic about what these models will actually look like. I mean, that's isn't that the constant complaint with uh, official idea sets is how much they change them and everything. So it is good to, to kind of keep that in mind. Yeah, it's, an, it's a cool model and it's quite sizable and it would look pretty neat on the desk. But I feel like these guys are really going to have a, a, a task to redesign their models within the constraints that have been set down for them. Yeah. Yeah, uh, when during the original run of ADP sets, when uh, John and I were in Billing over there, uh, it was it was quite the uh, the challenge what they were going through, like creating the instructions, and then also getting all the sets to actually work with pieces that they uh, were making at the time and everything. Uh, it was it was not easy at all. <laughs> yeah, a bit. Yeah, they could replace it with like playing cards or something like that. On top, I don't know. This one's creepy as it is. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, hard pass. Yeah. Hard I love how this, this skeleton's like pushing them away in that image. <laughs> yeah, it's like he's busting out of his own skin, and then his and then he's got all of his guts in there as well that are all going to fall out. It's like, nah. I love this. This, this as is going to give idea. kids nightmares. I think this is a super creative idea, and I, I love it as an idea. Like if this was on display at a convention, but as yeah. a set that I would buy, I I don't see that happening. No, I couldn't have it in my Lego room. I'd be looking over my shoulder at it the whole time, <laughs> waiting for it to move. Eh? I, I like the big minifigure, but I, they're not going to print the, the halves of the face. No. And do those parts even exist? No. So. Mm, I think yeah. this one might be a bust. Yeah. The Temple of Hermit looks. Now awesome. that, however. Oh, Kirk Wilson decided to show up. Hey, Vision. He's chilling. He's muted. He knows yeah, he's, he's muted. muted. This is the best time ever. So, I, oh, come with the frog here, guys. I, I'm aware that I am late. I, I I'm aware. Um, I, I was doing something. I was, Kirk, I was. Let, let me say real quick. This lighting looks great. Every week, you're up in something about your end of the internet. The lighting, the looks, something. Every Thank week, you. the haircut. I mean, something bad. improves every week. Thank you. How are you guys doing? Hold on. Let, let, let's let's get a comparison here, John. Go to Kirk. Then no, go to Marie. Go to me, real quick. Ugh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I I look like the dude that's been doing this for fifteen years. Go back to Kirk, real quick. Hey, Spry chicken over here. Spry chicken. <laughs> oh, man. You yeah, know, he's I, so bright eyed and bushy tailed. I'm like, I, let's get this over with. <laughs> How are you guys doing? Decent. We're, we're working through the Bricklink sets. Are there any you want to yeah, buy, or uh, are you are you out? Um, from what we've talked about so far, I didn't get to see too much of it. I popped in a bit and I saw like the one thing, but I can't remember what that was. So I'm gonna have to like look all over yeah. again. So scroll um, through the list. Um, we're the we're gonna find what, it. Up. Uh, brick. I can. Uh, <laughs> I got yeah, don't worry about it. Okay, yeah, Jeff's got it. Take a look. We're gonna go through the Temple of Hermit. You can let us know. Um, I love this Temple of Hermit. I think it hurts it because it's not a actual built set. I think the colors would pop even more if it weren't a render. But mm -hmm. I love that set. Yeah, yeah, yeah this is super yeah. cool. If that's not too dissimilar to the final product, uh, that'll be one that I'd be getting. It go oh, well with see. with the other uh, Chinese New Year sets, I guess. I'm, I'm probably getting. The culture wrong and everything else, but whatever. I'm sorry. It would look uh, great think, along those size sets. Yeah, right. and I think there's going to be more and more Asian-inspired architectural type buildings like this coming in the so. near future. I just, 
I love this design. I, I The reason why I say that is because in the new Monkey Kid stuff, there's a new roof element, and it's just itching to be made into that style roof right there, and I can't wait to see what happens with it in the future. It'll be... that, that That's... I, I like it. Remember, you guys remember the Ninjas uh, line that came out with Castles a while ago? Sort of the precursor to Ninjago. Like, that... That temple reminds me of something that would fit in that world, like as an updated model to that line. And I think that's great. I love that ninja's theme. That that's like going that was like all the way back to the nineties, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's quite a few years old now. But yeah, there's the, the ninja minifigures were super cool, some great little buildings and a uh, castles, and yeah, like you said, I th- I agree it would fit very well. I think that'd be you know, I, Oh, you got all these people that build Lego cities and Lego moon bases and everything else and, like, castle layouts. Like, where's the cool, like, samurai, you know, versus ninja or whatever Japanese, you know, city, Asian-inspired world or whatever build? Where's that at? Show me that. I this see also it. makes me want a, uh, in the botanical line, like, a Japanese garden set would be super oh, cool. Uh, that, yes, uh, that please. Like you could do with that. Yeah. Yes, please. It looks like it's a minific scale. Uh, der, I can't say your name, dude. I'm sorry. Yeah, looks pretty yep. good. Looks pretty minific scale. So, yeah. Doesn't look bad. You like hey. boats? Boat I House love boats. And the science, adve- science adventures. So, I, I love that. The, the Boathouse Diner reminds me of a place in Vegas uh, that had a similar setup, even though it's a landlocked state. So, go figure that but like it was just really cool. It was just a, a it was like family friendly in Vegas of all places. They had really good food and people were friendly there. It was it was cool. That just that's a nostalgia hit for me. But if we get I, back to the three things that I talked about, new building techniques, nope, uh, uniqueness to it. Yeah, there's some uniqueness to it. And is, does it blow my socks off? No. So, yeah. This appeals nicely to both my love of pirates and seafood. Uh, I, I think I think this would definitely be a cool set. Of all of the all of the boat themed ones we've looked at so far, this is my favorite. Yeah, I think this one. The original submission had a different coloration for the actual bulk of the model. This is beige on here, so I think it hurts it a little bit by not being in a different color. But they're obviously working with the parts that they have available for the existing catalog and availability and all that. But I like it a lot. Um. The science adventures, that's getting made, 100%. Mm-hmm. I'm excited. It looks like we've got an archaeologist is one of those in there. So last week I mentioned uh, building these dino sets here, how much I, I want an archaeologist set. So I saw this and I was like, yes, that would be great. We need more. We need more of that. That's probably going to be the most least expensive one out of all of these. So I expect that one wholeheartedly to get funded. Joshua, can I ask you a question about your history stuff real quick? Uh, yes, feel free. So were you the archaeologist that was after relics, or were you digging up the, the diamond? So that'd be a paleontologist, I guess. Never mind, I answered my own question. We're good. Well, what a great exchange, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think this, this, this would be a cool set, though. Mm-hmm. Cool. What else we got? We're getting down to the very uh, bottom of the list here. We got the Japanese old style architecture. Mamma Mia. All three things are fulfilled there. That's just cool. I find this one really confusing. To, it's really hard to tell from the images what exactly is the set because you have this mountain piece here and then you have that whole other building in the previous image on the right. And then where is that bit on the left? fit into everything because yeah. that looks different again so oh man i, I struggle front, with this one i thought the front of the mountain was those three buildings there the, the nope. buildings on the left but no oh no yeah, the photos are really no they're both confusing and i feel like low quality and so it, it's difficult to tell what exactly is happening here yeah we'll, we'll find out may 31st <laughs> that's uh, so. just, just a question mark on that one for now yeah like i like the buildings on the right hand side they look really neat. Uh, the other two, not that fussed on, but yeah, it's hopefully he cleans it up a little bit. It's clearly been actually built and photographed rather than rendered. Yeah. So, and I don't remember this one at all from ideas. So this one 
potentially is pretty old. I think it's two separate things or three separate things. It's just a style of like a three in one. Or you could build like the mountaintop or the that's kind of neat. Okay. Those are entirely different builds though. Yeah. I think it just might be an idea of like how I don't know. We'll find out in two months. <laughs> mm. It's from 2011. Oh my goodness! Oh, oh wow! There you go. That's over 10 years ago. In case That's you wanted like to feel back young when it was Kuso still. I was in my 20s then. That's some That's perspective. Kids. I can't believe they went that far back for. Yeah, for right. Projects. It's a long way. It's pretty neat that they brought it back, though. Just you know, like a nice throwback. Speaking of throwbacks, we got the retro bowling alley. Following the theme of the downtown diner there. So this one I really like. My issue with it is that it is a four-lane bowling alley. I think in order to cut down on the cost, you could have cut this thing right in half. Instead of having four lanes, you have two. The The entirety of the build, for the most part, you could buy two of them and pop them right together, and it would have a full building. So I think if it were cut in half, save on cost. Brian, that's three lanes. Is it three lane or? Yeah. Can you click on the image, John? No, that's four. I thought it was no, four. It's it's definitely three, bud. Yeah, I think he's right. Actually, well, I I like I don't like the height of the building. I think it feels like it needs to be slightly taller. Yeah, I, I get that it's probably in line with scale, at minifig scale. But um, if they just made it maybe a half a floor taller or maybe a, even a second floor with an arcade or something or other you know what could have happened you make it one less lane so make it two lanes my point was make it two lanes and then have it a little bit taller and then you could buy two of them together i don't know though i feel like this captures at least the, the bowling alleys around here where i live they aren't tall at all like i feel like this no. captures had like how an actual bowling alley looks mm. um pretty realistically at least in my experience Plus, you can reenact scenes from the Big Lebowski in it. Andreas will be very happy about that. Yeah. It's nicely detailed. Right. Yeah, I think this this is really cool. I like this I'll one. Give it that. It's very nicely detailed. I think it is. I like the bowling pins out front. I like the the little uh, little arty things, like the little squares with the teal on it out front. Like that's all cool. That's that's very yeah. reminiscent of like a bowling alley from the sixties or fifties. Okay, this no, it totally is four lanes. Unless I'm hallucinating. No, that's four lanes. <laughs> that's it definitely is. three lanes, Brian. Okay, so if you look at okay, look at this, look at the next image, John. It's uh, hard so to tell the images. Yes. So you see the red and the yellow ball, and there's yeah. one lane on the one lane on the far light. Uh -huh. Right. Go to the next image, the, the left one, left image. You can see there's three more lanes. So it's four lanes. No, Brian. That's that's one, two, three. Let's no, get a poll this one you can't see because the wall blocks it, Jeff. I don't know. Is the wall that high enough? Okay. I'm, you know what? It's either blue or green. It doesn't matter to me. It looks great either way. But yeah, it can uh, be two lanes. Actually, sorry, sorry, Jeff. I'm going to jump back off the ship and back onto Brian's. I think he's right looking at that it's where fair. the balls are placed back to that previous one. <laughs> That's I a Brian, look at you. Small Vic. <laughs> small vic no. Um, but Four I, lanes would make more sense because it would make it asymmetrical. So <laughs> It's obviously five lanes. Okay, Milan. <laughs> Thanks, Milan. Apparently, we're learning how to count today. That's, That's great. cool. But yeah. this in the diner, yeah, I think somebody mentioned earlier, would be go great together. Oh, yeah, for sure. I like, I like the arcades even that they had on there, too. The two little arcade machines. That was really neat. That was really a little done. So. Uh, oh, so it looks like that's the other half of a Spider-Man build that came out a couple of years ago. <laughs> cool. Can't wait for Hydro Man oh. and Spider-Man to, you know, Go at it there. I was so annoyed at how Spider-Man kept interrupting my beautiful uh, European <laughs> architecture tour in that movie. <laughs> I mean, it's cool. It's great. It's definitely Venice. I've, I, I mean, so I've been to Venice. It's a cool city to visit. It is fun to walk around and everything. And obviously it's unique with the canals, but it seems like it's so overdone in Lego builds. Like uh, even on ideas, it seems like there's constantly new like Venice Canal uh, builds being put up on ideas. Um, and I'm not sure why that is exactly. I mean, I guess just because it's it's a famous city and that that type of building is 
a well known. Um, so I like it, but I also at the same time feel like it's it's been done so many times. You can go to California and experience the same thing in that little neighborhood that's the canal district where its house is on a canal, only <laughs> the town isn't falling apart and things look like it's not, you know, broken. <laughs> exact same thing as being in Italy. Exact same thing. Exact same. I mean, the, uh, what is it? The Ocean's Eleven? Did the heist in, in Venice where they stole from the, the guy that was, uh, you know, scared to go outside? Can't think of the word right now. But, um... I, nope, don't care about this. That's my opinion. There's no pictures of interiors. So if there's going to be no interiors on this, there's no reason it needs to be a full building. This is another situation to me where you could cut it right down the middle, cut the cost in half. And if you really wanted to fill in the building, you buy two of them. That's an instruction book by, if anything. No, Sorry. I, think it, I think it looks a bit boring, personally. Yeah. I mean, I'd, I'd build it to finish the Spider-Man scene. The next one is the boat repair shop, which goes very well with the old fishing store, almost color for color. Like you could make this set from that set. That place looks like I'm going to go there and get mugged, buy something illegal. <laughs> it, look really, or like, it looks like something out of like a video. I don't know, maybe Fallout or some kind of video game. I don't know exactly yeah. what I'm thinking of, but it definitely it doesn't look real inviting. <laughs> Yeah, like, oh man, like what's that game where the fog comes in and the world changes? Starts with an it. Shadow, oh, what was it called? I can't think of it. They made two movies out of it. Pyramid Head was in it. What was that movie <laughs> called? What was the game called? Silent Hill? Silent Hill. It looks like something that we would see in Silent Hill. I'm like, nope, hard pass. Yeah. I mean... Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I got nothing. The final one out of all of these... Quest Builder, that's getting made. Oh, yeah. That's getting made. I'm going to support that, mostly because every Lego nerd and Dungeons & Dragons guy builds oh. their dungeon map out of Lego. I do. My DM does. Other people do. So, like, that'd be perfect for Dungeons & Dragons for positioning and, like, board games and things like that. Why would you even need to buy that, though? You could probably make that just with the spare parts that are laying around on your desk. Look, Dan, I don't ask you why you wear glasses. Don't ask me why I would do something obvious, too. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I think Dan is a lot of people who don't. I mean, well, maybe they are like D&D &D fans or something like Jeff was saying and don't own Lego. Maybe this is the first or don't don't have a lot of Lego and they, this is how they're getting into it. But yeah, oh, yeah. If you're, for big Lego fans, sure, you probably could assemble something like this with uh, the collection you have on hand. Yeah, I have. So, but I mean, it's just neat to see it. It's just neat to uh, for a nod to Hero Quest and a nod to Dungeons and Dragons. That's all. I've seen some really cool mocks of conventions along this line over the years. Where actually they'll they'll play them during the non-public hours of conventions and stuff, and and they're always really cool. So I've always thought this was a neat idea, kind of storytelling with Lego. Yeah, it is. It's very cool. So that's I all like of them. Features. Yeah, you th unfortunately, you're not going to get them. I don't like them, so I'm not worried well, about that. Well, cool. So that's all of them. Uh, so, Brian, everything. should we do something where, like, if you had to throw down money on the table, what's, like, your top three or something you would support sure. today? Sure. Today, as the sets are right now. Yes. Not they, you're not, you're not just, like, just like with a significant other, you're not investing in what they could potentially become. You're investing in who they are as a person in this moment, okay? So let's go through this list and see which ones we would throw money on right now in this very moment okay um is this the top of the list oh no this we're going is... back up oh, okay yeah. i got you i got you okay um i'm buying the seasons in time cool yeah me too oh i don't i i see i'm debating on, i think it's a really neat idea i'm trying to think if i would actually actually buy this though let's limit it to three your top yeah, three. I'm gonna I'm gonna pass then. If we're limited to three, I think there's a pass for me at this point. Okay. So I'm buying that. So is Dan. I'm gonna pass. You're not buying the 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 Kakapo? Dan? Really? Nah. 
Wow. <laughs> How unpatriotic of you. <laughs> what, are, are you buying the 50s diner? <laughs> True. Oh, <laughs> how unpatriotic of you. Are you getting the bowling alley? Oh, those tables have turned. Oh, are you getting the dive <laughs> shop? Um, how many other American buildings were in there? Oh, <laughs> I've only got one that I have to say no to. Uh, the castle you. for me, for sure. Yeah. Yes, for the castle. Me and Dan alone on that island. Pass. I'd take the dive shop. Probably be my number three. I like the. Can fish I use all of mine up on Bionicle? No, <laughs> absolutely not. Uh, man, I like the boat. I like the boat as it is right there. Now nah, I'll pass. Yeah, not for me. Brickwest Studios, yes. Yeah, absolutely. Hard pass. Oh, uh, I see. I love, I love the idea that it's like the movie studio. I still don't like that it looks so similar. The saloon itself looks so similar to the ADP set. So I mean, it'd be hard to justify having both at once. But man, it's a Western movie set. I can't really. I, th I think I've got to. I've got to say yes on this one. So th this would be. This would be my second one. Ooh. Nope. Um, no. Now I'm trying to remember what else is coming. Pursuit of Flight is a very strong contender for me, but I well, we need to keep going through the list before I commit. Okay. No, to both. Oh. Do I want that no. Lego store? Um, no, I'll pass on it. If I got to think about it, then it's a no, right? Yeah. Uh, no. no. The Exploratorium would be my fourth choice if we had a fourth choice. Oh, the no. cool I gotta do the aquarium just to tick off Dan. <laughs> I'm the aquarium it. is, like Jeff just said, it's further down the line for me, but definitely definitely one to get. I'll use my third on that one. It's right above Bionicle for me. Wow. <laughs> Mm, the mountain windmill is cool. It is cool. I guess that's yeah, I like it, but we're stuck with three choices only, and there's a few. I know. I'm waiting for my third one to come up, and there it is. Temple of the Hermit would be my third. Same. That would be my number one choice, actually. Number one choice, Temple of the Hermit, second, Seasons in Time, third, Dive Shop. My fictitious fourth would be the Temple of Hermit. So, Cudino29, we are at BrickLink right now, which is BrickLink.com, where they are celebrating the AFOL, AFOL designer sets with the new round. So, you go there, you look at it, when the time comes, you throw money at it. There I go. think there's some great ones here, but I think my top three, looking through these again, is is the Castle, uh, the Western Movie Studio, and uh, JK's Flight one. I think, I think those, at this point, I think those are my top three. There's a number of other ones, though, yeah, that are great here that I would probably end up supporting as well. Bowling Alley would be five for me. Yep. Quest Builder would be six. Cool. Yep. So which, go, going through these, just, I guess, one last time, which one's getting funded first? I think Bionicle is a very strong contender. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be hard. I mean, if, if the if the Bionicle fans rally around that, uh, like they did voting for possible ideas set, uh, I think I think that would go very quickly. Science Adventures, Bionicle, and I want to say uh, uh, one of the one of the fishing houses. The castle, things. I think, is going to be very one one of the top ones. It's the only castle set in here. Yeah, I think Castle's pretty going to be high up there. So, uh, the Pursuit of Flight, I think, as well, has a decent that chance. There was a lot of people that were really, you know, wanting that to be an idea set. So, and Jason's work is so well known that I think people just yeah. uh, automatically gravitate towards that. Yeah, because they know that it's got a quality mechanism, and 
the other thing too with that one is it's just not going to be in the highest price point it's going to be sort of probably low medium i i can't wait to switch out all of the 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 pieces the micro scene below to just create like a couple world war one trenches and have those planes going over yeah yeah If Lego had this website together, I would love to see a live ticker progress bar on here so we could do like ESPN reporting the day these launch. Like, what <laughs> site are you going to get first? They like, voted in on like polling results coming in. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and then instead of just doing the live stream for like three hours, we do it for three weeks and we count all the votes and make yeah, sure Brian they is standing at like a big touch screen TV. <laughs> well, it seems time. It's just a couple of more people that need to get in. And then, oh, oh, oh. I could go to downtown Oklahoma City and just stand there in front of uh, some of the impressive skyscrapers. I'm here on the street, fellas, and <laughs> no one cares. <laughs> oh, man. And then all the Bionicle people are going to be like, this vote's rigged. And then we got to, re uh, here we go. So we will know. <laughs> May 31st, what the final ones, uh, final renditions of these models look like. And then the crowdfunding begins, which could, that could realistically end before August 10th, uh, provided that they do get the pre-orders in. And then, I yeah, some of these you're going to see under your Christmas tree this year, which is already kind of weird to think about that we're in April and it's already thinking about Christmas. But it's, it's March. Hashtag right? March. Uh, it's going to be April. We'll so, see if uh, if Lego doesn't release any other uh, massive Coliseum scale set. Some of these might be making an appearance on the twenty four hour live stream with me this year. No doubt, oh, this year we'll probably know. get the UCS Bat Cave that nobody knew was happening and wanted so bad. And it's like, <laughs> well, it's only five hundred dollars. Okay, is that is that in production with Princess Peach's castle as well? Oh, Gotta be. Cool. It has to be, please, for the love of everything. <laughs> yeah. See, see, even Brian wants a UCS Bat Cave. No, a twenty thousand piece Death Star. <laughs> if it means that I get Princess Peach's castle, give me every Star Wars set that's ever existed, please. <laughs> right. I don't care. We need a six foot Death Star. You know, come on. Yes. Do we really though? Oh, of course we do. Yeah. Many fig scale. Genuine. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I think I saw a picture of one that was on display at a convention or something just recently. It was about a six foot tall Death Star. It was huge. Yeah, there's a guy named Adrian that built um, Deep Space Nine from Star Trek that was like ginormous. It was Check it out on Beyond the Brick, everyone. We have a number of Adrian's massive builds. He did the, yeah. the Firefly ship. Uh, he did Bender. He's done, he's done a few really massive builds uh, over the years that are super cool. Hey, he's a super nice guy. I got to know him a little bit on uh, old Grey Bricks on Thursday. So, yeah. Yeah. Cool. I've, I actually have seen that on on this channel. That um, what, The one you just talked about. That was huge. How did it stay together, that ring? How did it stay together? He's got a, he, he cheated a little bit. He's got steel going through uh, the ring and everything else. But, I mean. Fair enough. You have to. I, I, don't know. I want to see Babylon 5 built by him. That'd be neat. Anyway. Now, I, uh, so the other the other thing we haven't really touched on of of all of the obviously there's many many sets that have reached ten thousand that weren't turned into official ideas sets. Do you feel like this grouping is kind of representative of those quality wise and what you wanted to see, or were were a lot of your if you think back over the years, a lot of the ones that stood out to you guys were those not represented here? Um, provided that they can only have ones in this lineup that did not involve an IP. That's I'm, true. I'm, See, I guess you cut out IP. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I I like a lot of the things that have an intellectual property attached to them, but of what is here in this Bricklink lineup and is not a property, I'm satisfied with it. Um, I think some of them still should have made ten thousand and gone onto store shelves, but I think it's a good selection. And I think when this is all done, Lego is going to be able to see. All right what got through this time and then when they're picking the next round of these let's say in 20 maybe this could be every other year or something annually whatever whatever they wanted to do what the next time they pick the next round of these if that ends up happening they can pick a bit more uh competitively with the the design choices where some of these i think we can look at them and be like that's not getting made that's not really appealing whatever 
but I think you could get really competitive with like the next wave of these and ooh, it could be tough to choose some over the others. Oh, there he is, unmasked! <laughs> <laughs> What's up, y'all? How's it going? <laughs> let me let me call you out publicly here. So oh, great. It's like I go on, I call you out publicly the moment I go on. <laughs> you, 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 your microphone volume is so high. It is? <laughs> You're getting, getting away from me. Hey. All right, here, look. Is this better? Is this better? Did that do anything? I think uh, he's used to he's used to filtering it through some crushed neoprene right. of, of a uh, <laughs> mantis mask. Okay, you're good. I'm good so now. not in in the first week we got to see you unmasked. We also mm -hmm. got to see you in the shower. Can you <laughs> dial it back? Well, look at that. Did you know if you watch uh, the my Chrome C three PO review from 2015 or something like that, there was a reflection on there and it was me shirtless. So that was a reference to that. <laughs> I know it was an accident, and then everybody made a meme about it. Just why were you shirtless while you were? It happens a lot. Question: Were you just walking out the bed? It's a hot summer day, you know. I just gotta get that review done quick. Look, I don't. I understand. Sweat. Hey, Jeff gets it. My boy Jeff gets it. I don't. I I get it completely. I don't wear pants if I don't have to. He gets it. He understands. He understands. Please that. don't stand up, Jeff. Please, no, no. please, please don't stand up. Why do you think I blacked out my camera earlier? I got up for a reason. I don't know. We, have pants we up were going to stop now. by for a surprise visit on the way down to Brick Rodeo in Texas, but I don't think you did that. <laughs> that killed it. Oh, no, no I'll, oh, buy, I'll buy you and John dinner, though. If you do come through Oklahoma, I'll take you to Hideaway. We'll get some pie. That good. sounds very that good. Sounds really good. Yeah. Make sure it puts pants on. Pizza. I will have pants on. <laughs> Jeff, will Ryan, you take me out to dinner? <laughs> I don't know why you're working with your shirt off. What? Like, it happens. <laughs> what do you mean? It, you think you think I just sit here and I'm like, oh yeah, let me just let me just record let me just record some Pokemon real quick. All right, what's going on, everybody? It's your boy. Like, no, like I, I I'm a professional. Hey. I put a nice coat on. Oh, I got my hair. Oh, sorry. I like for me, like I don't see this as work, so it's fun. <laughs> I don't care. This is your livelihood. Hello. I, know, you but, I mean, I don't, I don't want to make you, cool content. You have to factor in the fact that he's in Florida. So That's that, true. I mean, like, it, 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 it excuses everything. There. Yeah, it's like. <laughs> yeah, it, it's likely oh, an alligator would snap him up as he's doing a video. <laughs> he's down in Florida. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I'm telling you, we don't have alligators just running around everywhere. But there's alligators in a lot of bodies of water all around. They just don't get on land. So, bam. Well, there you go. <laughs> so, well, thank you for stopping in for well, you yep. said what five minutes. Hi. Yep. Bye. See you. No, I'm kidding. I'll stay no. for a little longer. <laughs> so, oh, hey, Justin, I did watch one of your review videos of your surprise video from Bricklink that you got because I felt guilty. So I was like, man, I don't watch this stuff, but I like this movie <laughs> stuff, so I should watch this. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Oh, you I so badly box? wanted to call that out loud, Brian. <laughs> I wanted to call that out loud. You, you can call it out Friday. That's fine. Okay, um, I, I will. I will. You got to make the same joke though, because otherwise we're going to lose it. I want to be invited I, back next week. I'm already on fair. my third and final warning. Yeah, so. <laughs> Are you guys talking about the new Bricklink sets today? Uh, we, we just enough? wrapped up. Wrapping we can go back circle. through the whole list if you want to. We got another I, hour. Honestly, actually, you know, I, I haven't looked at it, and I kind of want to keep it a surprise until after I buy all my old Bricklink sets, which I think today I'm going to open up the rest of them. So stay tuned. But Did you buy the rest of them? 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 I Justin, bought the rest of the ones I want. Yeah. Just okay. you like rob a bank at gunpoint. Like what <laughs> happened here? You bought all of them. You're YouTube like, bucks, bro. I'm telling you, the YouTube bucks. My 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 viewers help me so much with yeah, me buying whatever like I want. So it gets it goes full circle. I give back with the videos. That's true. Uh, M Mini yeah. Brick says, uh, "Who's the stud on the bottom left? You must be confusing your directions. I'm right over here, Mini Brick." <laughs> Oh, okay. Oh, oh, okay. There you go. Yeah, so there's, Sorry, there's, there's it's yeah. just too good. Here, yep. Um, oh, oh, so, there you go. I'm so if, okay, you want to keep that a surprise? Cool, yeah. sure. Um, while I have you here, but yeah. there's Fabuland in there, Justin. There is, spoiler alert. No, I'm kidding. That, wait, is there really? You're kidding. Oh, my God. You actually got me there, Josh. Was no, I'm kidding. No, I'm kidding. That was that caught me off surprise. I was like, actually, like, wait, there's Fabulous in there. Wait, what? <laughs> Next, you're going to tell me there's Paradisa in there. 
Is there parody in there? No, I don't. I don't think so. I mean, maybe it's a parody to parts. I don't know. Maybe. Oh, okay. The pastel of parody <laughs> You know. <laughs> but anyways, Brian was gonna say something. I was gonna ask you how your your past like week has been with your uh, face reveal. How your audience has responded to it, and how you feel comfortability wise in your in your content now. I mean, my audience had a better response than I would ever think that they would have. Like, you know, I mean, not that I thought they wouldn't have a good response, but everybody's like giving me compliments, which is awesome, 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 awesome. And I've just been with taking off the mask. I'm just literally myself now. And I'm just, I don't, I don't care what other people think negatively of me. So I'm just like, I'm That's so good. energetic now. And it's like amazing. <laughs> That's great. Right. So on, now, yeah. now you can reasonably go to conventions. You don't have to wear a mask or anything like that. Okay, you're gonna appear. I, and now, I, think, I hope this means more just to good convention, I, or, or I guess first time. <laughs> well, I mean, technically, time. you went to the conventions, but you just didn't have the mask on, and you're like, "Yep, here I am. No one knows That's me." The, it's I never, great. No, I never even went to the conventions. Oh. <laughs> so I literally never went to any conventions besides Star Wars Celebration and this one convention down south. None of it related to Lego. But yeah. yeah. Oh, hey, here's a creepy message for you. I can imagine just too good before face a reveal, just sleeping shirtless in bed with the mask. We're going to time you out, Lorenco, for that just weird. <laughs> thought. We're, thank, we're just going to remove you. that comment. That's a. Uh... We're gonna we're gonna Whoa. remove that one. Um, <laughs> so okay, let's make this a little less creepy. So now you get the face reveal, right? We get to see what your face looks like. Beautiful face, tremendous face, lovely face. Great. Okay. You look like a younger, happier Brian. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Jeff, I was broken even at his age. Okay? And so much thinner. There is some truth to that. There is some truth to that. I don't think there's that big of a thing. I think, I think Look, you guys are pretty similar ages, aren't you? Uh, he's I'm 23. Younger. Yeah, so, ju so Justin is Brian's little brother. I don't know if he's there we go. Yet. Oh, there so, you go. Something? Yeah. Hey, so I don't even, bro, I don't even up? remember being no. 20 something. It was so long ago. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, I don't remember being 22 and 21, but that's a whole other story. But, anyways, <laughs> those, those are just some long nights, Saturday uh, nights you got there, Justin. Jeez. But, <laughs> okay. What I was going to say is I notice, you know, you're a very clean shaven guy, but I see the I outline for I, I, I see the outline for a powerful mustache there, Justin. What's going on here, man? I like the, I like the little outline. I don't no, like no, no, no. No, I, hey, you, I, no, you I need a powerful, a powerful stash. You gotta go full Mario. You, <laughs> you gotta, gotta go full. You gotta go full seventies stash. Yeah. I, you, you guys can yeah. pull off all that stuff. I, I don't. I did it once after Japan because I didn't shave for that long because I was in Japan and then like I didn't shave before Japan and it, I did not like it. It was too like on the face. Like I kept nope. like. Just this. I'm like, Ew. just this, just this, and let it go. Just let it go. You get used let to it. it. Go. Let it go. Yeah, I actually don't like, like you know, having it on me. It here. looks great on you guys. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's like, mm -hmm. yeah. It's the old oh. super catcher. <laughs> see, see, this this is the better point here. What does the girlfriend think? Yeah. What does? Oh, think? she. She okay. I love my girlfriend so much. She does not care how I look. Like literally, he, I can look. He like used anything. the L word. Yeah. He used the L word. Oh, oh my god! Oh, that. <laughs> what? Oh, I mean. Oh, yeah. I said love. Oh, my beautiful right. boy. He's know, crazy, growing right? up. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, she doesn't care how I look. Literally, I could look like anything, okay. and she'll still love me for who I am. <laughs> so, I don't think she cares. <laughs> well, so, well, at least you've tried it out, so you you know now. Yeah, I mean, maybe I'll try it again and see what the viewers think or whatever. But I, I, anybody I, else hear a doorbell? That was I. I think that was my phone, honestly. No. Oh, yep. Okay. Oh, because oh, okay. I think my okay. Like Can I just ask actually one genuine real question? Yep. What was the motivation, but but you know, behind losing the mask, going full face reveal uh, after? Well, because you've been that character for so long, and you know, I, I guess you built your entire. Uh, I didn't need full screen for that, but anyway, uh, you've built you built your entire channel around the the mask of the mantis. So that's a huge step, a huge step. And props to you for doing it. Right, you know, Thank full you. respect. Thank um, you. But what and, was it? What did you yeah, just wake Dan, up one day and go? Before have we no. talked before? So no, it's, we've it's never nice talked before. Yeah, no. I know it's nice talking. You too. To you. I know. Thanks. Yeah. But okay. Uh, so uh, the motivation. Great question. Uh, 
I like my my whole life I felt like I was wearing a mask and not being myself. So it culminated to me literally wearing a mask on my livelihood. I, I don't know if that's the right word to use, but like it's my job, but my hobby, but I love it. Yeah. Like, so like, I just want to be myself um, because I've always had tr troubles being myself and expressing myself. Um, so this was the moment where I could truly be myself, just taking off the mask. So I planned it in the beginning of the year. Uh, my dad originally convinced me because I wasn't like, I wasn't interested in doing a face reveal, but he was like, you should consider doing a face reveal, yada, yada, in like January. Um, so after that conversation, I really thought about it. I'm like, okay, April 1st, I'm going to do a face reveal. And it's going to be me, something with me taking off the mask or something. Originally, it was going to be mega meta where like it was an OSRS recording, which is what I did. So basically like I record the OSRS with the mask on and then I got to mime it with my hands. I like, I do talk with my hands a lot. But I mime it with my hands and I listen to the audio while I have the mask on so it looks like I'm talking. So I was originally going to do that and then like thieves come in and then they come and like try to take me or something like that. But then I would like pause the video and then it would zoom out from the camera and from the computer and I'm like editing, trying to explain to somebody that I'm doing a face reveal, but I'm not showing my face. And that seemed too complex, too <laughs> harsh with the thieves too, and too everything. Too Nolan. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> perhaps, yeah. So I was like, okay, let me take that OSRS idea where I'm recording the OSRS and kind of show it behind the scenes of me mimicking it and everything with my hands, which I do all the time. And then halfway through, I'm going to be fed up because I literally can't express myself with the mask on. It's, it's so painful with the mask because it's like very sweaty and stuff. So I take it off, I stand back down, or I sit back down, and then I reveal my face. And if you look in the background, um, like there was like bags and stuff in the bed on the bed. And then my friend was in the background. And so when I stood up, he removed the bags and I stood back down. So my life is a little bit more clean. So yeah, there's like meaning to it on different levels. But anyway, so that's that was my motivation. I do the face reveal. But yeah, that's awesome. I like that idea of the different levels of it. Thank you, Jeff. I yeah. really appreciate that. Yeah, thank a you. A suggestion I am gonna make for you if yeah. you ever have like so I have like a background set up here with all sorts yeah. of knickknacks and whatever. If you ever get to the point where you have something like that, you should put Lego. the mask on a mannequin head and put it in the like, background. Okay. Yeah, uh, that's a great suggestion. And my friend suggested me that two days ago. I bought the stand. It probably Good. is in the mail now. So it's, <laughs> Good. it's I mean it's probably gonna be where the buzz is at and stuff. Yeah, it should yeah. so like I have this shelf over here full of like all my Bricks O'Brien stuff. Like if you mm -hmm. had it in the background as like yeah. uh you know, whatever. Yeah. I might probably put it just on that shelf over here. So we'll yeah, see. Yeah, for sure. So it's not super yeah, but yeah. So, but that's the thing I do, I'm getting more used to this webcam stuff and I don't like the location of where my computer's at now. Cause it's like, mm -hmm. it's like the windows right there. So I might actually move my computer to be honest. And then I can have like more of a defined background like that. Yep. And I also don't like having my bed in the background. Cause I, I do my bed. But... <laughs> <laughs> okay, this, this isn't, this isn't 2008 YouTube, Justin. Okay. No back in the background of the song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, hey guys, what's up? <laughs> so yeah, I know. I I I, I do want to probably reposition my. I'm probably going. I might have to just reposition my room because I want to move my bed and stuff. And yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. But uh, I'm getting used to the camera anyway. I like this 4K camera or whatever the heck. It's really hard to like. I thought it would just be you record, you put your mic in, bam. But like in OBS, like the volume gets this like it's disconnected and then like there's all this lighting <laughs> yeah. stuff i'm like this is not so i literally just for my a news video yesterday i just recorded my phone me talking like this with like on a portrait and that was like so much easier than using the webcam and using the mic and it's like whatever, next thing you know you'll exclusively be on tiktok doing content like that <laughs> yeah mm. well guys here's a seven <laughs> second joke you know it's like, okay. <laughs> but i'm like not a tiktoker <laughs> but yeah so that's the story of the face reveal. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Well, wow. at least now you can show your face on podcasts and everything else. And best of luck with, you know, formatting your content appropriately. And, you know, I appreciate that. that. Well, this is it. I mean, 
now I gotta go because I got a lot to do. But this was a great talk. With what do you What are you working champion. on? What do you have to do? Tell us. Okay, you want you want me to tell you what I gotta do? Okay, so sure. I gotta do that Bricklink opening video by five p.m. My friend's coming over at four, so I gotta clean a little bit. I okay. also gotta make lunch because I just woke up. Yeah, I woke up really late because I was okay. You need to fix your sleep schedule. I do. I literally do. I mean, like I go just at seven a.m. Do not let this man talk to you about a sleep schedule. <laughs> I do oh, not. This is probably bad too. But uh, you know, I, I've been getting probably. I need to get seven hours of sleep, but I've been getting six, which is not good because the later I go to sleep, the worse it gets. So I, I do need to. I'm probably gonna do like a three or four a.m. today. Bam, wake up at like twelve. That's that's perfect for me. But yeah. Anyways, so the life uh, and times. Yep. I'll see you guys. And Bye. it was nice meeting you, Dan. Yeah, Peace you out. too, Justin. Thanks for stopping by, Justin. Of yeah, course, bro. Josh, Jeff, and Brad. <laughs> Off into the night he goes. Dan, thank you for introducing sleep. yourself to Justin by asking a real hard hitting question. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, no worries. You know, that's me, man. <laughs> Roar and ready. <laughs> That was, uh, uh, it was it was good. I'm I'm happy for him. Uh, I thought I think it's long overdue. It was like the first time we went to his house for a studio tour was like four years ago now or something. And he mentioned back then how he was wanting to to do something. And I'm like, yes, now let's 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 get a move on. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I remember when he joined the LAN 2018. I think it was. Uh, I was a lug ambassador back then. And I followed his channel for a long time, just like yours. I think probably two of the first channels that I started following when I got back into Lego as an adult. You know, they've You're always been there. Mm. <laughs> well, the probably the two biggest and best, most informative channels on YouTube, up there with Jang as well, I guess. So, yeah. That Jang, where's he at, man? I don't know. He's busy, busy uh, refining his system. Yeah, when Justin mentioned how. Oh, he's, you've got to you've got to do so much work to get the mic and this the, the camera and everything look good. I thought of Jang. I mean, he's just spent like so. I think it's pretty much set now. But when he was first setting up his new backdrop and everything, he just spent months getting that all all to look right. He is a yep. perfectionist, don't you know? But he he did pay our our boy Brian a, a handsy handsome compliment the other day. So. So, so I, I got a comment from uh, Bobo Laveau on Twitch, who's watching right now. Hi, Bobo. He said, hey, you must be on cloud nine because Jang mentioned you at the beginning of the live stream the other day. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And on stream yesterday, I went back and watched the beginning. He, he'll he make comments of like, oh, I have this whole streaming set up here. I'm nowhere near as good and professional as, as Bricks O'Brien. So now I have a clip of Jang Bricks saying, I'm nowhere near as good as Bricks O'Brien. <laughs> Bring an endorsement. Bam, there we go. <laughs> All I need Look is that. that on a t-shirt, and now I can get the multi-million dollar deals because Jang already has it, so now that's a ringing endorsement. I don't think that's, I don't think yep, that's how that works. That's how it works. That's well, exactly how it works. You multi-million dollar <laughs> deals. I don't... Okay. Yep. All right. Jeff, you're not in the business. You wouldn't know. Jang Bricks and I... <laughs> S tier, S class. Yeah, you're 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 something, all right. <laughs> yep. So, um, no, but I I hope Jang pops on one of these shows sometime like soon ish. It's been a little while since the uh, 24 hour stream. But I'll have to excuse myself if that happens. Oh, okay. You and Jang, I'm not qualified. I'm not qualified. I am not qualified to talk to Jang. There you go. He's pretty I, easy to talk to, Jeff. I think you can handle it. I don't know. I can't believe I missed this Jang drama on the stream. Uh, you did, Isabel. Uh, you missed a good. It was it was a decent stream last night. She did make it for the Friday night stream. That was the the fun one. What have you been streaming recently, Brian? Any new games? Uh, no. Well, Friday night I I did a <laughs> just like well, I did a a three hour auction. He sure did. <laughs> For your Lego um, sets you've been trying to get rid of? Uh, mostly video games <laughs> and and like a ton of stuff around my office. Um, and, and Jeff is laughing because like, so I had a list of stuff that I presented to the moderators of like, all right, you know, here's here's all these different um, video games and whatever else is popping up. And so as I was doing stuff, I'm like, oh, this would be cool. This would be cool. So the list ended up being like twice as long as it initially was because I just kept finding stuff around my office to toss onto the auction. So 
He uh, had reserves. Yeah, he had reserves on most of the stuff, right? Like we're only going to sell it if it's got. Da, 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 da. Okay, so this other stuff that he threw on because he was like, "Oh, I found this sitting in my office." He was like, "What's the reserve on this?" And we're like, "What? <laughs> like what? Like you didn't? Well, we'll just and like he threw up like." three of last year's bigger monkey kid sets and was like, yeah, I guess we'll start this at 200. Meanwhile, me and the mods are like, what? Like, does so, he not know how much things are worth? Does he not know how money works? So I, let me, I'm going to share my screen here real quick. Big shout out goes out to Isabel who made this incredible art uh, from the auction. She stayed up till two in the morning watching the auction. So <laughs> what in the world I went on the stream with a a dog interlined um like coat and i have a giant foam blue hat that i actually have back over here and i had a squeaky gavel for when all the auctions would end um so yes i i slicked my hair the back hairs. oh my goodness the neck beard everything i was drinking That's a can amazing. of amazing it, it was a good time it was a very very good time i sold vhs's actually no one bought them but i listed vhs's um the oh, yeah. the Rugrats VHS that you pulled out of nowhere and we're just like what what is this what does this even mean what's <laughs> even happening right now <laughs> meanwhile Steve Struble is having a heart attack and he's like okay I'm fine everything's fine mod chat is full of not family friendly languages we're oh. like and then Brian gets done and he's like yep thanks everybody okay great and then he looks into mod chat and he's like oh like, <laughs> yeah <laughs> Like I stopped like writing stuff down after a while because the other two moderators were great, two young kids, and they got on board and they took care of it. But like I'm trying to keep up with everything that Brian's selling, and like <laughs> I'm messaging Steve with like, "What's the reserve on that?" There is no reserve, Jeff. I don't know what to tell you. Okay, Steve. So is there a building <laughs> feature to sell stuff on stream, Brian, or will you no. just we'll just put a dollar amount in the chat? Uh, they use a dollar sign emoji, and then whoever won the auction. I like put like a little uh, text thing that was like, all right, it stopped. And then we all squared it away on PayPal afterward. And then that's it. The, the best part about Brian's auction. Sorry, Brian, I'm going to keep interrupting you because I'm, I guess that's what I do now um, was the, uh, the child's play donation that he was able to make about what? 700 bucks, 600 bucks, it was 600. Yeah. 600 bucks to child's play, which is uh, a cool company. They uh, help out terminally ill children in hospitals with like games and stuff. And like, you know, so that was cool. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So hel helping support uh, charities there as well with your random things around the office. Well, those items specifically were items that I, I got for like, so one of them was like a Brix O'Brien hoodie, but it was like the actual hoodie of my mascot. So it had like the black, it was like a one-off, like I tested it to see if it would work and I never made it. So like something like that, someone bid on and then the proceeds went to charity. There was like a, another shirt that had like all Mario sketches on it. That's a one-off thing. So like more special items like that were the charity things. And um, it Don't was really about the date. Oh yeah. I have, I have a date. Well, not a date, but it's a, it's a certain booked time with me. Um, so yeah, that was good. That, and it, it all went for charity. So yeah. it's all, all good. Um, yeah, it was a great success. And for anyone that's like, isn't that against the terms of service to do an auction? Well, the, the payment wasn't facilitated through Twitch. And I looked in the terms of service. There's like nothing about like anything pertaining to that. So I looked, Steve looked, we all looked and we're like, I guess not. All right, cool. So it's fine. So, you know, nobody anybody, complains. No, no. And the money went to charity and money went to uh, keeping the lights on here. So, you know, win-win. It's exciting. Should we That's do a, right. an auction stream on Beyond the Break at some point? I think if you did, you... I. What do you mean, Jeff? What? <laughs> we, just, we just get Steve a couple of cans of Monster Energy drinks, fire him up for 17 hours straight. Steve's old. He'll have a stroke if that happens. <laughs> well... I, I do I do have ideas for charity things to do on here, but we can we can discuss at a later time. Can we go play mini golf somewhere? That'd be fun. <laughs> I'm I'm all for that. <laughs> you know, they have like golf, you know, like golf things for like charity, you get like 
pick like 10 Lego YouTubers and me because I came up with the idea. <laughs> and we all go play golf for charity, like mini golf or something. We fly Dan out. It'll be a good time. Dan, is mini golf a thing in New Zealand? Yeah, it is. Uh, my wife and I play a lot of mini golf. Well, we used to play a lot of mini golf when everywhere we went overseas in New Zealand. It was awesome. It's fun, um, yeah. So, yeah, we do. We have mini golf room. See, everybody wins. <laughs> You're welcome. It's so much better than real golf, which I suck at. Yeah, plus, you know, these places usually serve beer, so. Me too. <laughs> yeah. Well, but, <laughs> what, what, Brian? No, I was going to say that's it. And then um, I got general streaming stuff this week. Uh, Friday is going to be uh, Marbles, which is where you can win like free prizes and stuff. And then a very special big announcement for me personally, I guess. Are you letting kids gamble with Marbles on your stream? That doesn't sound right. It's, it's not. There's no fee to enter. It is free to play. Nope, it's free to play. The pro nope. Well, I mean that helps. Jeff, but Jeff secretly <laughs> run like the, the money side. <laughs> well, I mean no. So it, it is free to part. Okay, and you can win some Bob coffee as well as some other things. Uh, well, announcements to be made this week. So don't forget about Thursday, Brian. Yeah, but we're playing raft. Just view the schedule on Twitter. Just, just, whole... Yeah. Okay. We're not going to let you sit here and plug all your streams. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of plugging streams, Dan, which before we wrap up here, do you have one you'd like to mention? Oh, okay. Are, we actually, are you going to finish up very shortly, are you? Yeah, uh, yes, I think so. Oh, sweet. All right. Well, I can hang around for a couple more minutes then. Um, okay. So, well, well, thanks for letting me plug the stream. Uh, April B on Twitch right now is streaming the uh, NASA shuttle discovery. Uh, it's pre-release review copy that she was sent via the LAN um head on over it's looking pretty amazing uh, and if you head over there ask her to show you the hubble telescope part of it honestly i'm convinced this is going to be a day one buy for me now that hubble yeah, so even just the hubble telescope section on its own would have made for a fantastic set so yeah, if you're interested in nasa stuff shuttle stuff head over to april b on twitch thank yeah. you we're, we're just about done here, I think, right, Joshua? Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, so go over and watch April B. She's building that pretty much all day. So she's chugging away at it. Yeah. Anyway, Sounds good. thanks There's for that. Link in Appreciate the chat. that. Well, I think that will wrap it up for us. Uh, good, good. Jeff, did you, did you, did we miss out on giving you a chance to plug something? <laughs> okay. Fine, you get 30 seconds. <laughs> Wednesday at 9 o'clock Eastern, Friday at uh, 9 o'clock Eastern, I'll be doing stuff with Lego people or by myself building Lego. Come check it out on my channel. There you go. Cool. What's the name of your channel? It's Jeff McElwee. Sounds good. Yep. Everyone go check it out. There's lots. It's amazing how much Lego content there is to watch these days. It's just like nonstop. Uh, yeah. Back there back is. back in my day when when beyond the brick was just a, a little a little inkling uh there were there wasn't this non-stop uh streaming stuff for everybody to enjoy you had to, really, those, you had to really dig around for your lego content gotta push those yeah. dvds joshua <laughs> that's right <laughs> <laughs> oh you had to wait for your dvd to be sent to you to get your lego mm -hmm. content yep <laughs> Oh, I'm glad. I'm glad we've got more content now. Well, good conversation about the the Bricklink sets. I'm excited for that. Uh, we'll see. We'll see what comes out of that. How changed they might be, but I think we'll get some good stuff either way. So, thank you everyone for watching today's stream. We'll be back uh, next week with more content for you. See you soon.